All right, here we go. Gilbert Arenas, welcome back. Thank you for having me. Of course, man. Always a pleasure. <laughs> when we get together, we always kick up some dust, <laughs> yeah. hurt some feelings. <laughs> I try not to. I try yeah, not these to. These things happen. Yeah. These things happen. Well, first of all, this is something that hits close to home with you. What are your thoughts on Kanye having to pay Kim 200000 a month for child support for four kids? I, I personally think the child the 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 child support system is outdated, corrupted. Huh. Um one, you you got two billionaires? Yes. What's the point? Okay. Well I, I mean I understand that, you know, it goes off percentage, this a master. Okay, yes. I get all the logistics. Right. And and prenups never apply to child support. No. It's only spousal support. Only spousal so it don't matter if you got the, the bulletproof prenup, they're still going to look at your salary when it comes to kids and say, yeah. so, toss it out the window is just about the kids. Yeah. So, you know, when it comes to the child support and those two, it's like, what does, what does she need the 200000 for? It's, you know, he's going to be there as a father. She's a billionaire. He's a billionaire. What is the point at this point? Well, like, is he really going to be there as a father? It, yeah. It seems like he's I mean, but not it's still really, like, like, I I, like, I can say if she like was. He's sort of dancing on a restraining order right now. <laughs> if you ask me, he's got to. <laughs> but it just, it just, what is the purpose of it? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, there's no, this is, they make too much money each other. She makes too much money to say, all right, I need child support. What is her two hundred thousand going to do? It's Nothing. probably going to go into trust. Yeah, for the kids. But and then that's that. That's my second thing. Why isn't there a trust for child support? It's for the children, right? Right. So they should do it like the Kruger accounts for star kids, right? Half of the money goes to the mother to take care of the kids, mm -hmm. right? While they're, you know. You know. <laughs> watching the kid, whatever the fuck they do, right? <laughs> whatever the fuck they, 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 they do. The <laughs> and then the other the other 50% should go on a, an account that no one can touch. Mm -hmm. When that child turns 18, that child can unlock, you know, yeah. that money. Now, when that child is done, the child support that the father has paid all these years actually benefits them in real time. Right. These children are turning 18. There's no fucking money. Well, There's no money. Have to think about all these NBA baby mamas. They've touched millions in child support. The child turns 18. There's no money for them. They don't spend it on bags and Birkin bags and trips, but but injections and shit like that. <laughs> right, but but Kim is not your typical NBA baby mother. No, no, of course uh, not. She is a billionaire. I think she's worth like 1.2 billion on her own. So clearly, I don't think she's using this money to go buy bags and get, no, no, more, no, no, get no. more plastic surgery. No, no, no. That's she what has. But that's More why she enough should, money. But that's why she doesn't and, need it. And she got Kanye's house that he bought across the street from her. That's why she don't need it. That's why this one, this one is one of the rare ones where. What's the point? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, there technically is not a point, except that, look, at the end of the day, she has probably damn near 100% custody of these mm -hmm. kids, right? Kanye losing his damn mind, mm -hmm. going off on Hitler rants and you know, saying that Rosa Parks was a plant and <laughs> yeah, yeah. slavery was a choice and George Floyd died from fentanyl and, you know, Kim has to have extra security at the school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they're putting up Nazi signs over the 405 freeway supporting Kanye. And but listen, it's a disaster. But all I'm saying is, is that, yes, they both have money. She technically doesn't need the child support. But at the end of the day, as a father, you should be paying your fair share whether or not the mother needs it or not. For the kids. Those are your kids. You should be financially supporting those kids. You financially support your kids. Yes. Right? So, yes. Okay. It, I get that part. It's true. Mm -hmm. So there should be, it should be done another way. You shouldn't say, all right, you have to pay 200000 to her. Right? Like, how does that benefit the kids? They're very well taken care of on both sides. Uh, put it in some type of escrow, whatever. And that, you know, might be, it, that might be the case. But that should be, that should be the language. That should Don't be the tell language. us he's, she's getting 200,000 because she's laughing at it too. Like, what the fuck do I need it for? <laughs> right? <laughs> it was like, that's, you know, that's like Beyonce. Let's say Jay-Z paying Beyonce child support one day. She's laughing at right. that fucking money. Right, because it's, it's only, really. it's four kids, so it's only 50,000 a kid. Yeah. Now, to the average working man, that sounds like a lot, but that's equivalent to like 500 bucks a kid. Mm -hmm. I think for an average working person, right? Yeah. 
Kanye's salary, hundreds of millions, mm -hmm. versus someone making 50, 60,000. That's like paying 500 bucks a kid, four kids, $2,000 a month. I don't think anyone would really cry over that amount. Mm -hmm. I got four kids with this woman. She has primary custody. I'm not really around. I got to pay 500 bucks a kid. Okay, I can live with that. I think that's what Kanye is paying as well. But because it's 2.4 million and it sounds, oh, he's paying all these millions of dollars, mm -hmm. people are kind of losing it over it. I personally think he got off easy. I think it could have been worse. I think it could have been worse if she really put him through the ringer. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it all. It all about you know. It's all about you know, especially the California's this or master. Um, you know, it could be it could be two hundred thousand, or it can be a lot lower, depending on when she files. You know what I mean? If he's not making money in that calendar year, and she filed, she, like I don't know, it's, it's off income um, being made, not have plus money in the bank and whatever the revenues kicking in. So that's California's rule. So it could, it could have been lower. It could have been worse. Um, but you know, my thing with kids and child support is like, when, when is the court going to protect the children asset? If this is about children future, why is the money being well, no, given no. to the mother without any, without any guidelines? Well, but child support is not about the children's future. It's about the children's present, present. right? Yes. I'm right about this, right? Yes. It's not about what they'll get in 18 years or whatever. It's about how they're gonna support themselves right now. Yeah, no, I, yeah. Listen, but, I this, mean, it's but, it's, not, but this is this is why because it changes. It's it's uncounted for money. It's uncounted for money that can actually create new wealth. Right. So let's just say you know, and my whole child support will take 50 cents. He said he paid how much in child support? About a million and seven, three million, right? Hold on a second. I know you're talking about with the son, right? Uh -huh. The whole thing with the son. Uh, Sixty-seven hundred dollars a month. No, no. How much did he pay in child support the whole time? The whole time. It was like one. He's like, I gave my baby mom like one point seven million. Yeah, right? something like that. Yeah. All right. If half went to her, because mm -hmm. it's untaxed money, right. half went to her to to take care of the child, and then the other half was for him. Mm -hmm. That is new money. That's a new. That's new wealth for that child. That's new wealth for a kid. So there's mil. That you got to remember. There's because she would have never been a millionaire because she gets it monthly. The child becomes a new millionaire when they turn eighteen. If it's in a trust. If it's in a trust. Yeah. So there's new millionaires that could be created from this child support if it was a, a controlled on it because that child does not get access until it's all over with. Now that lump sum three, four, five million. So these. These Kardashian kids, they automatically become millionaires. Well, they're going to become millionaires. Anyways. Anyway, I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's I'm just, no, I'm thing. just saying right. in theory, when you're talking about it, if I gave $3 million in child support, half went to the mother, then half goes to my child. When my child becomes 18, 1.5. He's a, he's a well, new plus, millionaire. Plus, you know, uh, compound interest, that could really turn into. But now you see where. Now you don't need five, a, maybe even ten no, million. You don't like, need no loans for no small business. You yep. don't need no loans for College, nothing. It's you. Boom, it's all right there. Yeah, and that's right. my that's that's my biggest issue with child support. Listen, like uh, paying it. That's if that's what yeah. I got to do. I'm just saying how it's being used. Look, I interviewed Eddie Curry. Mm -hmm. You know, you know who he is, right? Mm -hmm. And he went into this really interesting story about how you know he had a baby with his high school sweetheart. Then he joined the NBA. They got divorced right away. She, you know, took him to court for child support, whatever. They, they worked something out. Right before the child turned 18, she took him to court and said that he hasn't been paying anything. He hasn't? And he said, mm -hmm. no, Your Honor, I've paid over a million dollars. Here's all the receipts. Here's this, this check here, cashier's check here, whatever, wire transfer. Here's all my receipts. And the judge said, well, this wasn't paid through the state. Mm -hmm. This was paid directly to her. So therefore, it's a gift. So now you owe over a million dollars in back child support. Mm -hmm. I'm getting served with papers for back child support because I never went in and changed and modified my child support from sixteen thousand. And I, I and I had been giving her money the whole time. I would just give her cash. I would send it to her account, um, but I wasn't paying it through the state. Like whenever, so they basically went in and said, "All right, well, you didn't pay the state of Illinois." So basically, you didn't give her nothing. And I'm telling the judge, like, look, I got documents. These are 
these are receipts from cashiers, checks. These are This is over a million dollars I've given this girl. They're like, no, nah, that was a gift. If you didn't give it to the state of Illinois, that was a gift. I'm like, are you serious? Wow. Yeah, bro. So they 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 hit me with a crazy, this this just happened. They hit me with a crazy tap. You know what I'm saying? And now she's going after my 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 uh pension. And my jaw just dropped. And you heard of this before. No, I know that's the ha- that's how it happens. They're gonna count it as a gift unless you're writing this is child support. You have to have your own personal records that's saying, hey, this is child. You have to have receipts of saying, this is child support. Mm. Email, this is child support. In your in your your wires, when they wire it, uh-huh. child support. Okay, so if it's actually <laughs> marked as that, then it'll count. Yes. Even though it doesn't go, but but isn't there like a system where you put money into the state and then it gets distributed to the mother? Yes, that's that's through the state. So if this if the woman files, uh-huh. right, and puts you in a system, then uh-huh. everything you give is considered uh-huh. child okay, support. Okay, so since she didn't actually put him in the system 18 years ago, mm-hmm. and he just kept writing, writing checks, checks and, just and paying like for school an, you know, and whatever else, just being being friendly, being friendly. So when so when you when you're being cordial, you have to understand cordial does not mean cordial, right? <laughs> you still have to protect men. You still have to protect yourselves or women that's paying child support. You still have to protect yourself by noting it, keeping track. Like, yo, I'm sending, this is my child support this month, <laughs> right? This is front loaded child support for uh, next month. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, that's I'm how my child, out. that's how my child support um, didn't skyrocket. So whenever me and Laura had fights and we broke up mm-hmm. and I'm paying her 10000 a month, I'm writing it as child support on my paperwork. It wasn't an allowance. I'm not dating you. <laughs> this is not no allowance. <laughs> it's, it's child support. Yeah. So when the judge says, how did you live when you guys broke up? Here's my paperwork. Boom. I've been paying her. While we were together, her allowance was 10. When, when we broke up, it was 20. I gave her ten thousand dollars extra for child support. Here are the receipts. Ah, yeah. I mean, I remember uh, earthquake when I interviewed him, and he was saying how you know, as a comedian, as an entertainer, you don't know when your next checks mm-hmm. are coming and things go up and down. So for his child support, he overpaid every month. You know, in the instance that at one point he's going to go through a dry spell and he's not going to be able to pay anything, but in his case. He was able to pay the whole time. Mm -hmm. So at like, by the time the kid turned like 15 or 16, he was all paid up. So he goes, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And the ex-wife was like, no, 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 you still, oh, you know, we're, we can't pay our bills. And it's like, I already paid. Mm -hmm. Here's all the paperwork. Just because I overpaid and you didn't manage your money properly Mm -hmm. is not my problem. She said, because you had paid off your child support a little bit early, that she felt she was about to be homeless along with your son. Well, she, her being homeless is not. The reason why I paid it off early, because I'm an independent contract, as of you. Yep. You don't work, you don't eat. Right. If you have a young lady, which she is, and you know that if you, if I mess around and get sick, I will not make money to pay her. So my thing is, let me put some extra to it so I build up some working capital. So in case I get sick, I have payments that I already paid. Mm-hmm. Thanks to the good Lord, I never got sick. So those 15 years of extra payments accumulated to six months early of me paying. So I say a joke, my son is 70. But in child support years, he's 18. Right. So if women want a man to pay the rears for the money she didn't get, then if you've been paid overages, you can't keep that too. You can't have it both ways. And if you spent it, and because you spent it, now it results in you not able to sustain your standard of living, how is it my fault? 
I'm on your side. Bro. How is it my fault? How am I making you homeless because I fulfilled my legal obligation to you, who you sent me to court? You took me to child support. They set the parameters in the prison. Personally, I would have gave you more had you came and talked to me. But you brought a third order portray in here and said, I don't trust him. Y'all tell us that you brought this man in here. And he said, this is how much I have to pay. I honored it and took it on everything. I paid my son everything, his, his personal, his private school, his Cadillac truck he has, his tuitions that he's going now for college. He lives in a room with him in Calabasas where I got the house for him. Everything financially has to deal with my kid on. Now the money that I give to you that's supposed to be for him now is causing you financial hardship. Did that work? It did work. In court? In court. Oh. Yep. You had a very angry, you know, ex-wife no, 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 yeah, in, yeah. in the process, but. Cause I, I used to do front load too. Mm. But in, when, you're on the, when you're on the child support system, you can't front load. Oh. They only take like one and a half payments up front. Oh. So like if I want to pay for the year. Can't do it. Can't do it. Huh. Cause they just assume that. But if you're on the, if, if you're in a court system. Yeah. If you're from just the court itself. Uh huh. You can pay whatever you want up front. It's so you put in the whole amount. You can put Day in the whole one. Yeah. And just be done with yeah, it. Yeah, be done. I don't got to <laughs> talk to you no more. You manage your. <laughs> but 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 through the 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 child support system itself. Yeah. It's, it's one and a half one and a half uh, payments. They will not hold the other one. They'll send it back. Wow. Okay. Because remember the whole Tristan Thompson thing when he got the the side chick pregnant. Mm -hmm. And he was offering her money and he was like, hey, I'm about to be, you know, I'm about to be done with the NBA. I'm not going to have a salary, mm -hmm. you know, so forth. This is going to be a better deal for you. Yeah, they're, trying to like that. they're trying to establish a, a set number. Yeah. Right. That didn't work. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's all math. What makes sense, right? Um, you know, this is for men and women. Whatever makes sense for the long run, because again, remember, when he's done, it's off of income being made. So if he's making zero, what happens is the interest that's building. So if his interest is making 40,000 a month, your child support is the, the anywhere from seven to 15% off that 40,000. So you can go from making 60 grand, 50 grand to 2,200, mm. you know, 3,500 when his deal was basically 18, you know, $12,000 for 18 years. You know what I mean? So you got to see which one. <laughs> <laughs> which one makes, you know, more sense in the long run versus what happens right now? Because you got to remember, making 40, 50,000 to a 3500 $5,000 drop fucks your life up. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't, nobody, it fucks your life up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, Erica Mena, I guess it was caught on video when she found out her child support payment from Safari for two kids was 4000 a month. And she just fucking lost it. But then again... Safari's not a wealthy guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he does reality TV and a couple of club walkthroughs, and yeah. that's about it. See, but with someone like with someone like them, you have to figure out when to hit him at the right time. <laughs> because you got to remember, you hit him in that calendar year. You're you're talking about COVID happening, this, and he's not doing nothing. Mm -hmm. That income is what he's made that year. Then you put him on child support, the course is this and this, and then the next the next money, he done made full five million. Now you're like, ah. <laughs> Well, then you can go back and renegotiate, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, it's not, it's like, it's, you can't just go back. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a period. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Just like he can go back every time, it, like, you know, it, yeah. there's, a, there's a... Okay, so you personally, with all the child support that you've paid on two kids? Four. Four kids. Four on record, yeah. I okay. mean, four, I'm paying four for child support. I'm paying all, I'm paying child support for all five. <laughs> but, but with Laura, it's four. Oh, okay. You have five kids total. Yeah. But okay. one, I'm not on the system, you know. Okay. Got it. Have you technically, have you paid exactly what you owe or do you technically overpay and, and you know, I'll also get school and I'll get yeah, extra yeah, clothes? Yeah, you're going to, okay, so um, my original case, this is what used to make me frustrated to all them women out there on her side, I was, oh, the judgment was 20,000. For four kids. For four kids. 5,000 a, a kid. Month. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's fair. I was happy with that. <laughs> yeah. 
because she was trying to go for two forty four. Um, so, so twenty twenty thousand times twelve. That's two hundred and forty quarter million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she wanted mediating, and I meant I'm, I'm, I'm so mediate. Okay. I told her. Uh, I told the judge, the retired judge. I, why am I here? I love with twenty thousand. I'm five. What the fuck am I here for? Yeah. I don't want to negotiate. So whatever they say, no. I'm saying no to all of it. Right. <laughs> first, the first fucking hour, just no. Okay, no, so what what did no. they try to pitch to you? Um, they were trying to pitch me that you know I need to pay for her ring. Like it was just it was just all this just just a whole bunch of nothing. Right. Okay. So the judge was like, "Listen, if they're money hungry on that side, won't you just ask for more time with the kids? You throw a little bit more money, you get more time." So I said, okay, 50, 50 summers. And then I want this, 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 and I'll put in $15,000 $15, extra. A month? Yeah. So you go up to 35. So now. I bumped it up to 35. Okay. And then I paid for school. On top of that? On top of that, which made it 44. So I was originally- At 20. At 20. And you went up to 44. And I went up to 44. Okay. That's a lot. Right? And then, you know, and then the probably like a month later, she fouled again. <laughs> she, she, she kept fouling and fouling. So and fou 44 wasn't enough? No, because she figured, oh, if it's at 44 from him, then I can tell the judge, like, ooh, I need more. Because And the judge was like, I, you know I have to go by what's on paper. So if you're going to keep coming here, I'm going to have to drop it down to the real number. Hmm. Like, like, it's better to attract bees with honey than vinegar. Right? So that was the whole thing. So I'm like, I'm loving this judge. Right? And then eventually we... <laughs> we win, and the judge went from forty-four to seventy-one hundred. Whoa, whoa, whoa! So you went from and twenty to forty-four, back down to seventy-one hundred. Mm -hmm. So she lost a third of her original on her fouling, not on mine. her fouling. It was her fouling. How angry was she when she got that seventy-one hundred? It was. <laughs> you got to be angry. Like the, You're not going to tell me she just brushed that off. No, of course not. <laughs> but that's why. That's why we don't get along now because it's like. Why am I going to give you a chance for more shots at me again? Mm. So, you know, like th there's no, like we, you, you parent from there, I'll parent from here. So I pay more because I still take care of the kids. I buy the kids all their clothes and shoes and do yeah. all that stuff. Like she pays for uh, one of our, our children's private school. I pay for the other one. And then, you know, the other two go in public. Um, but for the most part, I, you know, I pay for everything. And also, I pay I pay more for child support in itself because I still take care of the kids, right? So it's not like you know child support. Then when the kids come over, you hungry? Nigga, I'm not paying glass. Money. It's not that, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> so seventy one hundred, huh? Yeah, you're the king of this shit, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> what did you think when uh, out of the blue Kanye uh, accused Chris Paul of sleeping with Kim Kardashian? <laughs> To be honest, when he sent the picture, I thought it was just the white man above him. Right. I was like, oh, that's why they hiding his face. My man. <laughs> right? Like, I knew what he was trying to say, but, you know. What was he trying to say? I don't know. Like, uh, okay. I, I, I think I actually, I think I met Chris Paul the same night I met you. It was like this mansion party uh -huh. in Hollywood, I think. You know what I'm saying? But Chris Paul is happily married and <laughs> no, 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 Chris minding Ball his own business and suddenly <laughs> no Chris Ball slanted around here. That's that's when I said Kanye's went too far. <laughs> Kanye's went too far. Gone too far. <laughs> the, the, the rest of the stuff I pretend I didn't hear or see. Chris Ball, too far. The, that's your man? <laughs> Chris Ball, yeah. That's okay. my guy. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I met you guys together. Yeah, that's okay. my guy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like I you don't really hear no type of fuck shit when it comes oh, to Chris Paul. Quiet, he's dude. Quiet, <laughs> like does his job, <laughs> makes his millions. But that's what's it. We with Kanye, you just never no one's safe. No one's, <laughs> no one's safe. safe. I might end up on that summer jam screen at some point. <laughs> no one's safe. People around me have my deal. <laughs> Hughley interview has ended up on that screen before. Okay, did you call Chris Paul when all this happened? No, no, no. Nah, you I, just, I just made no, nah, I just made my little funny comment. Like stuff like that I don't question. It's like, you know, they're grown men. I, they figure that shit out. I mean, when you saw the whole Kanye meltdown that's happened over the last month or so, you know, starting with the White Lives Matter and then going to the George Floyd 
died from fentanyl. The cop's knee wasn't really on his neck. <sighs> Technically, he did not say that the lawsuit is not going to happen because he did not actually say he died of fentanyl. Mm -hmm. Those words didn't actually come out of his mouth, right? So legally, in the court of law, he didn't uh, he didn't actually defame him. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be an actual lawsuit. No. I think it's just yeah. Because what he said it. is he said they hit they hit him with the fentanyl. Okay, in the court of law, what does that fucking mean? Who who's they? The cops, friends. So it's not like he said he he said they hit him with the fentanyl. You know what I mean? That's he didn't say he took fentanyl. He didn't, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I, I'm about wordplay. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't actually get out what everybody was saying he was saying. Because yeah. I went back and I had to listen. And it was like, yeah, he hit him. They hit him with the fit and all. And then, you know, he was so all over the place that it was like, uh, all right. You, ooh, you almost had him. You know what I mean? It was one of those. Well, he said the cop's knee wasn't really on his neck. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But that doesn't. Say no, he listen, didn't die I, from, I, I, you know what I mean? I go by logistics. Right. I understand that legally <laughs> yeah. he could probably walk away from whatever quarter billion mm. dollar lawsuit they're trying to do. I mean, people, you could sue anyone for anything. It's and as long as you could, you either hire a lawyer, you get a lawyer to get to take it on contingency. It, yeah. it doesn't matter how real of a lawsuit it is. Mm -hmm. It's ultimately up to the judge to either throw it out or let it go forward. Mm -hmm. And then you deal with it from there. But I mean, as a black person in America, how did you feel when you heard that? I mean, we all saw what happened to George Floyd. Like I, I caught, I caught the end of it. Um, like when it was getting here. So what happened is, you know, it, it, it went out. Right. And then they pulled it. So it now it's trying to find clips. Yeah. You know, so all of it was happening so fast that it's like, all right, clip it. I'm so I'm like, all right, is this what he said? Uh, that's what he said. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm trying to figure out like, what is, it was so much like spaghetti going on that I didn't really get a sense of it. So I was like, ah, <laughs> then, you know what I mean? It was just, it was one of those things that I didn't put too much concern into because it was just all over the place. Right. And I was like, is this one interview? Is this two interviews? What the fuck is going yeah. on? Where's the original interview? And then it was like, oh, they it was pulled taken it. down. Yeah. And I'm like, I, 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 my issue is with, um, was with Noriega and him, right? You said he's your friend, right? This is your friend. At what point after the interview did you decide, okay, we're just going to edit some of this stuff out of here? You know, from, from a guy who has a podcast and I have friends, right? At what point did you say, all right, let me just take some of this. This is questionable stuff. And, you know, and then, and then put it out. It, the clickbait wasn't even worth it, you know. And yeah. I, I look at it from that part of it. Um, him destroying himself—that's his personal problem, you know. Um, I, I have Yeezys on right now. I bought them, right? I'm, I'm not burning my shoes. Me you know what I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean. So it's not like I don't. I know how to separate the music from the the person. Um, I'm one of those. I, you know what I mean? You say something I don't like. I don't like what you said on that part. Yeah. You know, you, you know, I like this part of you. I don't like that part of you. You know, I can, I can, I can separate people from saying, cause if you, if you're one of them people that says I root for him, but he said this one thing I don't like, throw the whole man away. Then you, who do you don't, you shouldn't like anyone then. Yeah. I mean, the, I love Hitler stuff. Didn't even pay attention. No. Nah. Like, that, like I stop, like that's what I'm saying. I don't Nazi want stuff, stuff. like I don't want to hear like where's the music? <laughs> like, give me the music, give me the shoes, you can keep the rest of that shit by yourself. I don't want none of that shit. Well well, here's actually a situation you could relate to. Just like you, Kanye got dropped by Adidas. Oh, I'm with Adidas. Oh, you're back with Adidas. I'm back now. For Adidas. <laughs> okay, well you did get dropped by Adidas. Uh -huh. So just like you back in the day, mm -hmm. he got dropped by Adidas. Um I was kind of surprised because all the other companies that dropped them, Gap, Balenciaga, whoever else, they, they were making a small smidgen of money based on their association with Kanye. But mm -hmm. Adidas, you know, I mean, there's all types of estimates, but I think it's clear from everyone that Yeezy definitely brought a lot of revenue. Mm -hmm. And 
focus on Adidas, as well as a cool factor that ultimately wasn't there in the U.S. Yeah. Now, outside of the U.S., where soccer runs the world, Adidas is fully established yeah. and, and is running running shit, right? Mm -hmm. But in the U.S., people weren't, weren't rocking with Adidas like they were with like Nike. Yeah. But he changed that mm -hmm. to a certain degree. So when Adidas dropped him, I mean, were you surprised at all or not really? Okay, so with that, it's it's more calculated than we dropping him. You got to remember, a week before all this, he's asking, let me go, let me go. He's trying to figure out how to get out of this deal. Right. He's right? also posting a video of him playing porn to the yeah. Adidas executives. Yeah, so he's trying he to- put an RIP- of the Adidas CEO mm -hmm. on his Instagram. I mean, so he's, he's poking the bear a lot. Yeah, so he's literally trying to get bit for a reason. Okay. So to them, they're like, we're not gonna, we're not letting him out, we're not letting him out. So it's like, at what point do we just say, fuck? I think he just forced their hand that they didn't, like I'm, I'm sure they didn't wanna let him go. Yeah. But it, it came to the point where, all right, let's 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 just try to figure out how to let him go. Um, so it seems like now he owns Yeezy brand. Well, he always did. He doesn't own certain designs. So like the 350s stay at Adidas. But the 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 slides, he owns. The newer stuff. Yeah. But all the stuff before that, he before, doesn't own. Before, yeah. he, he, they own those designs. They even announced they're going to put them out yeah, they're gonna keep without the Yeezy logo, mm -hmm. which I'm fine with. What, uh, Ye what Yeezy logo is there? Uh, I mean, it says Yeezy on there. I see what you're saying, though. It's not. It's not a, a major. Well, I think you know certain certain. You're wearing the 350s right now. Certain ones on the side say YZY okay. and then whatever. So it's 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 in there. Yeah. And so now he has, So now he owns Yeezy going forward to going make forward. shoes. So right. And I mean, if he find, I mean, he could make them himself, of course, and just put them out as capsules and you know to his own fan base. Uh, I don't think any major shoe brand will do a deal with him in the foreseeable future. Remember he showed up at Skechers and <laughs> they kicked him out. You know, it's so it's so unpredictable, just like he is. You you just never, you just never know. You, you don't. Like this is what's crazy about, you know, everything that's going on. You don't know. Yeah. There might be some young, hot, <laughs> some new hot young designer that's like, I'm a Yeezy brand, let's, I'm Yeezy fan, let's go up, I'm gonna take the chance. Well, no, I mean, being a designer is not what I'm I mean, but a designer who has that kind of pull with a, a, a son of this company. Well. <laughs> you know what I mean? A son of well, this company. Was, but whoever the dad is still has to sign you know, off. And but, you, you saw, I mean, he basically, he's got a history of burning all his corporate relationships. Yeah, of course. You see what I'm saying? It's like he gets into a relationship with the Gap and then he starts talking shit about the Gap. You, you know what I mean? It's not like he always wants to talk shit. He talks shit when he's ready to leave. Right. I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he goes, he he takes business deals to public opinion and forces people's hand mm -hmm. with that. So with the track record of what he's done and, and really the anti-Semitism doubling and redoubling mm -hmm. and everything else like that, I can't imagine any of the, a major corporate, a public corporation saying, yes, we're announcing our new deal with gay. <laughs> Not in the next five years, I'm thinking. Nah. I, I mean, but you... You, you never you, know. You never... Listen, some company in China might be going... <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. We don't care about the Jews. Go ahead. Yeah. Like. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You, you, yeah. you never know. You never that's, know. That's, that's, that's yeah. the scary part because at the end of the day, he's in a, he's in a different situation because he is the spotlight. Yeah. He is, he is the... the we call it the algorithm, right? He's the algorithm, you know, for, you know, anybody who wants to get put on, who wants to be in that, that realm, he drops music. Like it's really, once he drops music, it's a whole nother ball game. Everyone's going to pretend that what he did didn't matter. If he has, the, he, he his relationship with Drake fixes, he, you know, him and Drake, but that's I'm just, not, that's I know, get fixed. but people forget that Drake is Jewish, by the way, but yes, his mom is did. Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. He grew up in a Jewish neighborhood yeah, yeah. with Jewish relatives. Yeah, I know. <laughs> His black father wasn't around. I know. He was in Memphis somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he grew but, up with Jewish, but that's in a saying, Jewish but, household. But so you know, you it, it goes off the CD, then you see all those names on it, then you be like, yeah, let me, let me, let me listen. R. Kelly just dropped the tape, and people were listening to he it. He didn't really drop it. I know, but people was listening to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? yeah I feel you. Yeah.
I mean, uh, speaking of people getting dropped, Kyrie got dropped by uh, by Nike. Mm -hmm. They're saying that was $11 million a year deal. Mm -hmm. Does that sound about right? People fuck with Kyrie's, the sneakers. Uh, eight years, so you had about a $100 million shoe deal? Yeah. Were you surprised? Yes. Why so? I was taught this. When it comes to business, if it doesn't affect your bottom line, then I don't care what they're saying, right? So when you look, when you think about Kyrie, 99.9% .9 of his shoe sales are kids. Yeah. Do, do you think? Yeah, 40 year olds aren't buying Kyrie. No, so do you, so his shoe sales would not be interrupted by anyone because it's the kids that buy it. Now, let's think about a parent. The parent says, I'm not buying the Kyrie's. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck trying to tell your, your kid on their birthday or Christmas that you're not buying a new Kyrie eights. Nah, no. Well, no. It's not like there's not a go, million. Go to a shoe store. Options. Go to a shoe store right now with a kid and he wants the Kyrie's or shoe and that parent has to listen to him cry their back. No. Okay, so you're saying that... Uh if the parent says, okay, I'll get you some Jordans instead or some LeBrons or nah, that's not going to fly. No, that's not flying. That's so not flying. our opinion, our opinion, the adult opinion mm. of the situation didn't, does not affect the kids because the kids don't know what's going on. Half, half the, half the us adults didn't know what was going on. Mm. None of the kids know. My kids, my son was like, well, they're not doing the Kyrie eights. <laughs> well, I'm going to buy me some Kyrie sevens. So your kids wear Kyrie's? Yeah. Okay. Can't get my son out of goddamn Kyrie's. Mm. He's Kyrie's on his feet. He's KD uh, uh, in the jersey. Okay. There's nothing. Like, he has all my shoes and it's like, well, you're not Kyrie. <laughs> 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 you're not Kyrie. That's, but as I said, it's like trying to listen to those kids and say, no, nah, yeah, we're not messing with Kyrie's. Why? He said this. What does that mean? I don't care. I want the shoes. Mm. Uh -huh. So mine is the bottom line. If, does, yeah. if it doesn't affect your bottom line, you know. You know, like the, you know, I, I you know, I, that's what I said, like stuff like that, because I didn't watch the film, I don't know what's going on. I try to stay away from that part of it. I just look at it as a business, you know, you know, if I'm in, if I'm in the boardroom and we're talking about like numbers and logistics of it, and I'm like, does this affect the bottom line? If you hold on to Kyrie, where are you losing? What is the market value? What are you losing? And that that's how I make decisions. Well, when you talk about big corporations like this, it's uh, it's, it's an one. optics thing. Yeah, it's an optics. Like, does you know? Because think about it. Like, does it really matter that this shoe is associated with a player in terms of the quality or performance of the shoe? No, it's all the optics of it. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, I look up to this player, so if I wear a shoe, that I'm going to feel like I'm somehow. Mm -hmm. better you yeah, know what i mean like kids, i'm going yeah. i can you know i'm going putting on the shoes to make me play like Kyrie mm -hmm. and so forth so you know i mean this is why you know when you study marketing you know coca-cola doesn't uh, advertise at funerals <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> like they advertise in the olympics because yeah. they're trying to associate with good feelings and mm -hmm. positive and championships and, and so forth. They're not trying to associate with sadness and, yeah, yeah. you know, hate yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and that type of thing. Recently, uh, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp got into it. Ooh. You watch it? Ooh. Seen that, seen that yesterday. Do you think that Skip went below the belt with Shannon? Now, Shannon's a Hall of Fame. Hall of Famer. Uh-huh. And... Basically, from what I understand, you know, watching it a couple of times, Shannon was saying that Tom Brady is not playing as well as he usually does this year. And then Skip pushed back and he started to say, well, he's a better player than you ever were. Okay. Which is true. Which is true. I mean, different positions, obviously, mm -hmm. but still, I mean, you could yeah. say that yeah. overall in the overall, game of yeah. football, mm -hmm. Tom Brady is above Shannon Sharp. Uh -huh. And Shannon got offended. And the two of them, you know, started to, I mean, it looked like it was always going to be a fight. Yeah. Took off his glasses and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put your glasses back on. Put your glasses yeah, back on. I was yeah. like, oh, damn. Yeah. He's, yeah, yeah, Skip yeah. is actually <laughs> raising up a little. Uh -huh. Tell this man to put his glasses back mm -hmm. on. Okay. What did you think? 
I think on both sides is what everyone struggles with. When someone has opinion about something, mm -hmm. someone uses the credentials to take away their opinion. Ah, uh, yeah. Right? So if I say, oh, Greek the Freak. I made a Greek the Freak analogy, yeah. right? They're saying about his jumper, his mid-range, and how he needs to, if he's this good with this mid, if he's this good with liking so much, imagine what happens if he really focused and studied a game to understand that eventually mm -hmm. you can't use and everybody's like, well, you're not a champion. You're not a, like, what the fuck does that have to do with the the the, 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 the knowledge that I'm trying to give you? That, you don't have a ring. He want a ring. That's not the fucking point. Uh -huh. This yeah. is the point I'm making. You want to throw in because he won a championship. He's an MVP. Right. And I'm not that. It's it's yeah. all worthless what I'm saying. And that's that's been the biggest media fight. Going that fight right there is the prime example of every argument going forward with anybody. Like if I say something, right, you got to look at my accolades to see if it makes sense. Right. <laughs> like so the, that means that I can't talk about rappers. I can't talk about producers. Yeah. I can't talk about presidents. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't talk about yes. uh, that's actors. That's exactly. That's I can't talk about no one because I can't do none of that shit. That's exactly. The only thing I can talk about is other interviewers. And I need to shut up when it comes to anything else. <laughs> but basically, Which is you, silly. Think about it. When you're, when you're in the middle of an argument trying to make a point, the one thing they throw in is the accolade of you versus yeah. the person you're talking about. Like, if because I'm a three-time All-Star, three-time All-NBA, Anybody that's four and above, I can't talk about. Basically, <laughs> basically is what like when when you she, can't talk about COVID. Think about yeah. when 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 ESPN. You're watching ESPN, yeah, and you're making a point and be like, "Do you have a ring?" No. What the what the fuck does that got to do with my point? But, but doesn't <laughs> doesn't Shaq always do that to Barkley? Yes, but what Constantly. the fuck does that got to do with the actual Constantly. point he's yeah. making? Your ring does not define your greatness. Right. It doesn't. That's why whenever I make arguments, take your ring out. Now make a point. You you can't use ring as your defining statement of I'm I'm this. That that's not how it works. You were on a great team. Y'all y'all had success and that happened for you. But we're talking about individual accolades right now. The ring does not really so anybody who has a ring and I say something about, well, you got a ring. What well, he averaged four points. Who gets four? Eh, stop that. You know what I mean? Like, it's, but you know, their their argument themselves is, it's it's the typical battle right now where one is making a point and I was like, well, he was better than you. So why are you talking about him? Because uh, this is our show. And this is our job. This is what we do. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we do here. We talk about people. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we make our money. You know. and I pay my rent. So. You know, so. No, I mean, it was great. For, excellent point. It was great for TV. It, it was, was great, great for TV. I mean, Jalen Rose, uh, he chimed in. He said, uh, wow, what a bully tactic. And clowns call him drip. Uh, definition of a culture vulture. Mm -hmm. It's drip. Oh, that's, that's, that's. I guess that's a nickname. Oh, okay. For. Skip Bayless and Drip Bayless. I don't know. Okay. Anywho, uh, yeah, so he called him a culture vulture. Um, which to me, I've been called a culture vulture every day for the past 15 years, <laughs> about a million times a day. <laughs> My thing is you might as well just call me a honky at this point. <laughs> to me, it's the same thing. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, it just is what it is. When someone gets mad at a white person who's in, uh, uh, yeah. in hip hop or mm -hmm basketball or whatever they're they're a culture vulture so it, it is what it is um but you know i i personally i mean now when you say that yeah i think that's actually a good point i think skip actually went below the belt to try it's, to it's, prove his point which was unnecessary but he didn't have a point to prove it wasn't like you gotta remember when you do that you're not proving a point you're just trying to discredit his point mm, yeah so it's not like you you know you're not trying to prove a point you're just trying to discredit his point by saying yeah. well he's better than you yeah. He has more rings than you. You know, his wife looks better than your wife. Like, <laughs> right? He has more money than yours. It's jealous of him. Yeah, yeah. You're hating on him. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like I'm no, just... I'm actually looking at his stats. <laughs> you know, you start looking at the, uh, yeah. you start looking at your notes like, is he supposed to say this? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Nia Long has officially broken up with her uh, ex-NBA uh, coach, uh, boyfriend slash baby father. And she actually criticized the Celtics, saying that no one ever reached out to her to make sure that she was okay. You know, this is not an organization mm -hmm. that's supposed to be protecting women. 
you know, and so forth. And obviously her being caught in the middle of this thing, she didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. And suddenly she's getting thrown in the middle of this thing. I can understand how traumatic it was for her. As well as she talked about how the worst part was her son, that she was taking her son to school and suddenly this became public and he had to deal with it mm -hmm. and so forth. When, when you were going, you know, through your whole breakup, you know, with your girl and your kids are having to see all this stuff. How old were your kids when all this was, all this stuff was happening? Uh, what was it? Seven, nine. Okay. Pretty ten, young. Yeah. They're not watching the news. They're not on social media. Mm -hmm. So they were kind of shielded from it. In a sense. In a sense. In a sense. Yeah. Um, I think, I think, uh. Uh, Nia Long's son was like 12. Mm -hmm. He's more of an age of... Man, whose last name do they have? I'm assuming his. See, I didn't even, You know, I didn't really... Him, I didn't really know much about because this is his first year, you know, so yeah. I didn't know that they were married. You gotta remember, she's the bigger name. Well, they're not married. But I mean... Yeah. What? They weren't married. For 15 years? Something like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um... Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but she was the bigger name. Definitely. Let's just so. Although, give it a couple of years, he would have been, you know, maybe. I mean, even though he was an NBA player, she was the bigger name. Yes. So it makes sense that it's the Nia Long's husband or boy that yeah. that you know. So they're gonna run with that news versus just like I, I haven't even heard anything about it since. I mean, do you think that uh, the Udoka is going to be able to actually coach again in the NBA? Or do you think that just as messy as this is, the teams just don't want to fuck with him? I don't think no one's going to fuck with it, him anymore because of what is possibly still out there. What do we know? That he slept with two married women Damn. in the organization? Mm. All the story I heard. But who were the married women's husbands? Yeah, see, <laughs> from what I heard... <laughs> The one, the big one really hasn't been revealed yet. Yeah. And probably see, will never see. be revealed. That, that, that's what I heard. Now, now Nia Long's, her, her comment makes sense. How are you protecting this one? And she's a cheater. She's cheating on her husband too. Yeah. Why am I being blasted? And you're talking about protecting women. Why are you not protecting me and my family, which yeah. is me and my son? But she is, the, the adulterer is protected. You're not seeing or revealing her name. So instead of this being squished and says, you know, him and this name and this person, it becomes this near long thing. And I have nothing to do with this. Like, I understand that. Yeah. I remember there was the the rumor that uh, Udelka is going to be going to uh, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. But that didn't. That was probably just for just the, the test of water to see what the public says. Yeah. yeah, let's just see. Let's just see what the name, you know, I'm, I'm, and what's so funny is I'm pretty sure it'd have been accepted. Okay, so you personally, you played on how many teams total? Four, four teams. Did you ever mess around with any of the staff cheerleaders? Cheerleaders, yeah. Cheerleaders. Is that considered okay, or did it have to be done on the low because there's repercussions? <laughs> Because I know that, okay, listen, because I've talked to other NBA players. Certain teams, they don't give a shit. Other teams, it's a no-no. It all depends on that organization. Oh, it's a no-no for who? The, the cheerleaders? Well, What are they going to do to us? I'm making $20 million. You, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> no, no player has been, no player has been fined because he's Cause talking he's up, to a cheerleader. Okay, so no. that's just considered whatever. Yes, that is not okay a, because you got uh, they're hired they're they're, they're contract they're contract they're not even employees no they're not employees so okay it's just it's one of those did things they do that where, on purpose I wonder if that's an on purpose thing like, they, okay, they, they got to be contract just go it's, the players it's go the fuck focus. them and we can't it's, you know we don't want you sleeping with a player because you know it's not a real thing you think hold on let's just be honest here you're paying her two hundred dollars a game. Come on. <laughs> if I want to take her out to dinner, you really think she's going to say, oh, no, I want to save my $200. No. <laughs> Fucking hell yeah. Let's go, Agent Zero. <laughs> How often do, do, okay, let me ask you a question. How many cheerleaders do you know that have gotten pregnant by NBA players of the same team? 
Well, you got to count it out in your head. No, okay. I'm trying to think. Like, I, I mean, I haven't really heard many stories because usually it's one of those things where <laughs> we're not going to talk about it. And it's just going to go out of the way. I mean, it's, it's a cheerleader. I mean, that's what, like, like, <laughs> oh, we're going to get killed in the comments. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so this is a normal thing. Right? What do we? Right. And it only really gets dicey if you start sleeping with executive wives. And First of all, there's only a few teams that got good enough cheerleaders that you want to take serious. You got Miami, Lakers. Atlanta, back at Laker girls, horrible. Oh, these days are horrible? I haven't seen the new ones, but Lakers girl is, they're like, there's some teams that like, they go after looks and there's some teams that go after dancing. All right? Like, okay. Like, you know, like Laker girls, they can dance. All right? Let's just say that. Well, they used to be the baddest in the league. Like, you know, at I dancing. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> like, no one's calling the top. Paul list. Abdul came out of the, the, the Lakers. Uh, Listen, you know, no one has. Oh, ba back when Magic. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The back that then, era. Yeah. yeah. No one's calling a timeout, right? No one's calling a timeout in Utah to look at the dancers. Okay. Miami, you're calling timeouts just to look at the, the performance. Like, oh, hold on, y'all. Time out. <laughs> Let's look. <laughs> like that, that's a thing, you know, yeah. you know. So Atlanta had good ones, you know, you had, you know, Miami, you know, there's, you know, uh, Dallas, you know, there was a point where none of those girls can dance, you know. It didn't matter. No, it didn't. It was like, it they look good. They, they can't dance good. for shit. Okay. Like, Fair enough. <laughs> oh, okay. So basically, this is not a big deal in the NBA. No. Okay. Well, let me ask you this the whole uh, Draymond Green uh, punching Jordan Poole thing. Mm hmm. How often have you seen fist fights in practice? With Once teammates? a week. Once a week. Once a week. Have you ever punched anybody in practice? No. Have you ever been punched in practice? No. Name a fight that you saw in practice that got bad. Oh, uh, publicly it's Brennan Haywood and um, Eton Thomas. Okay. How bad did that get? They fought three times. <laughs> <laughs> they fought three times. Yeah, because this is the reason, the reason, like, just like usually, fighting, huh? yeah. Usually, because you got to remember when you're when you're in the um, when you're on a team, it's more of a brotherhood. So it's no different than two brothers fighting, right? No, you know. So it's like, okay, here they go again. You know, it's one of those things. It's like, all right, here they go. Let, let you get your punches out. Y'all talk a little trash. Now, can we go back to you know practice? And then you go back to practice, and nothing. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like like Jordan Poole finished practice. Well, you know, the story came out and then the video came out. And mm -hmm. that's when I think made it bad. So if, okay. If the video came out, right? Someone wanted it to be seen. Well, I mean, whoever filmed it could just wanted the clout of putting it out. No, I want, that is organizational. Oh, so you're saying the Warriors wanted that video out? To make Draymond look bad? Okay, let's just let's just put it to thought. Okay, no, I'm listening. We have practice cameras. We have camera cameras. Right? <laughs> we have people filming. We have it happened. Who is in control of it all now? The team. Hey, anybody who recorded it, this is not getting out. Right? If you're if this gets out, you're fired immediately and we're suing. Because we're on private private property, this we is, own the footage. Yeah, we own the footage. Yeah, I got it. But so aren't if it there, gets well, to, well, so if it gets to TMZ, you got to remember whose contract is up this summer. Well, but isn't <laughs> at a team okay? Like in a practice, it's not just employees, right? Don't you have other people that sometimes sit in and watch practices and so forth? No, that's not a thing. <laughs> no, it's not a thing. Okay, I'm a, I'm asking. I don't, I don't send it on NBA like, team practice. Remember, this is not where the the media comes in to last like 10, 15 minutes. Of okay, the so so let's just say you never brought a couple of your friends to to watch you practice, and they're just sitting in the bleachers, just hanging out. See what I'm saying? Like in like practice. Do, wait, do, uh, can players just bring their friends, girlfriends? Yeah, that footage that footage wasn't friends footage. Okay, <laughs> right. So you got to remember. The secrets of uh, NBA. When you call someone a bad locker room guy after you trade them, it's the reason because you got to remember there's ticket holders, there's fan favorites. So yeah. they need to, you know, 
validate why they're getting rid of somebody or why they're not going to sign a guy back for a certain amount of money. They're painting a picture. Right. You got to paint a picture. Okay. Jordan Poole is the new face coming up, right? So to make it a point, if they don't sign Draymond Green back, now there's a f- there's footage of why. There's a footage of why we, like, why would you get rid of this four-time champion, the, heart, the, 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 the soul and heart of our team? So you, you have to show the people an example so the fans, the world can say, oh, that's why. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? That that's why. Okay, you want to get rid of him? Okay, okay. Let's let's trade Draymond Green. Yeah, I mean, you know we've I mean? talked about this before about how guys get caught trying to pick up a hooker, and suddenly half their salary gets cut in half. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, in, the middle, of, in the middle power. of the negotiation at the time, it's like, okay, we'll take that haircut off of this because of that. We just saved twenty million. Think about this summer's Draymond Green's negotiation. Mm. Right? They, they gonna they're going to come out and say Jordan Poole. No, they're going <laughs> to say yeah, we uh, sixty million for four years. Right? He's going to say fuck no. Right? Now there's going to be a team out there that has this footage in their brain to say, all right, we're going to sign you for the max you're asking for. Mm. Right? So you, 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 cut ha- you, cut, you, you cut into his pay by that footage. Now he's going to probably have to sign a one-year deal, you know, to get his name back. It's, it's, just, it's, it's just one of those things that happen. You try to paint a bad picture of a guy so you can have negotiation power. So now if you can get Draymond Green back to the same team for – Half, half the, the money? Half the price. Yeah, half the price. Yeah, thank you. Well, let me see. What is his salary? Let's just look at it. Probably up. making about 25. 16.4 million. Yeah, so if you. A year. This was back in 2017. Yeah. So he has to be in the 20s. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess his average salary is about 25 million, is what they yeah, say. Yeah, so 25 million. Now, if you want to keep your team. Jordan Poole and all these young guys, wise men, right? And you want to go for uh, some more years? Because remember, to replace Draymond Green, there's no replacement right now. Wiseman hasn't turned it on yet. You know, the other guys are not really there. Draymond Green, as long as uh, Clay and Curry is playing at the level they're playing, Draymond Green fits best with all of them. So I do not want him for $30 million. <laughs> How could we get rid of that thirty million? Uh, you know, this video, yeah, this video that somehow leaked. Yeah, twelve million dollars. Let's start it off at twelve. Yeah, you know, and that's the that's the part about it. But but the but what happened? That happens all the time. That's not that he didn't do anything that hasn't been done every day. Every day in the NBA, there's thirty there's thirty teams. Every day, someone's gotten hit. <laughs> I mean, what about, for example, the uh, the Spreewell situation where he choked the coach? Do you ever see that? Is that considered just a total anomaly? Yeah, that was just that was just you know that was just probably one of those rarities in that moment of time. You got to remember that was that the nineties. Yeah, you know, after about two thousand five six, the coach being a focal point is really not that. Guys make too much money. The coach, yeah. We don't like him. Let's get him. You know, there's only a few coaches that have that kind of power mm-hmm. where who? they they have power over the team uh, versus the team have power huh. over them. Who who do you think is the greatest coach right now in the NBA? Who has that type of power? Who has power over the team? Yeah. You got Pop. Okay. Um, Rick Carlisle. Mm-hmm. So Steve Kerr, you don't think has Steve that? Steve Kerr. Oh, Steve Kerr. Okay. So Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr. Although he has a hell of a team to go oh, along man. with it, so. Um, yeah. <laughs> not a lot. That's it? Clearly, uh, I'm a Yudoka did not have that type of I don't know if Sproul <laughs> has it. He still, but you know, but Pat Riley's there, so there's really yeah. no. <laughs> there's a, but other than that, you know, the, if, if a player says, hey, I'm not feeling this man, and, you know, the first, the the, the number one option, two and three, be like, yo, get rid of him, that coach is gone. Well, I mean, speaking of the Warriors, that video of Steph Curry making five full court shots in a row. You think that's a real video? I, I, I thought I was seeing something where he's like, I did make two of them. But it's Steph Curry. So who, I, listen, if it went 10, we believe it. Full court shots? We believe it. I don't care if it was edited or not. It's Steph. <laughs> it's Steph. 
Like, how do you say this is fake? It's him. We've done seen everything under the sun this man. Yeah, but he doesn't make full court shots. We've right? seen 40 foot layups underhand here. <laughs> we've seen him go. We've watched this man do things that wasn't possible. So when it showed, I'm like, you're just sitting there like, fire emojis. Like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Like, he can come out right now. There can be a video, and it was like, Steph went 100 for 100. No one's questioning that. No one's going to question, did he go 100 for 100? Do you feel like, for example, Iman Shumper, when I interviewed him, he felt that Steph Curry, like, ruined the game of basketball or changed the game. <laughs> you know, if you like him or not. You know, if you like him, it's, you know, you frame it a certain type of way, but... He felt that Steph came in and changed the way that modern basketball was played in terms of threes and everything else like that. There was a different version of basketball. How so? It was different. It was, they, they, how we all learned is how, you know, it's like that traditional way of life. Why not go and get the easy points at the rim? And then, you know, as you start heating up and getting more of a feel, then you shoot your deep shot. You know what I'm saying? Right. And they had completely butchered that mold. <laughs> right, with Steph. And said, yeah, when the jump ball goes off, we hot from three. <laughs> they and just I outscore saying, you. Yeah, that, pisses me, that pissed me off. I, that, I didn't, because I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I didn't think to do that when I was a kid. So a little bit of it is that. Like, why well, didn't I think of that? Like, I never <laughs> liked shooting threes. I always wanted to look tough and go to the rim. Like, mm. I felt like that was how the game was played on willpower. I always felt like defensively, I was like, I want three fouls at least, bro. Like to let me know I'm trying to impose my will. Like I'm not trying to just let you have the game. You know what I mean? I felt like that was a version that the guys I was around, Kyrie, JR, I felt like these are the guys that this is this version makes sense. Braun back down at the end of the game. Like this is what we grew up watching. Mike all them playing the post. This is how you gotta win. Mm -hmm. And then here come these guys, like, nah, we'll shoot it from half court. <laughs> and it was working. Like you, you know, you tell everybody, you know, you live and die by the three. Like you tell everybody that and then they win. And it's like, I hate y'all. <laughs> Do you agree? That's that's basketball, right? That's every every 10 years. Shit, not even every six or seven years, someone changes it. There's a player that has a style that's not normal to mm -hmm. what we're accustomed to, and it's changed. Okay, so Steph Curry changed, was the last person to really change the game, you feel? Steph Curry didn't change the game, right? The Warriors changed the game. Along with Steph. The Warriors, because you got to remember, Steph in Pop's organization does not change yeah. the game. So the whole system that allowed Steph to be himself and didn't have to conform to a system. You got to remember, if he's playing for a coach that doesn't have that type of free mind, mm. right? You got to remember, there's coaches that allow players to explore, explore your game. And there's coaches that say, no, this is my style. You fit into this style, right? So having... Mark Jackson first, then having Steve Kerr and say, hey, Steph, do you. Go out there and explore. That that system with Steph, Clay, and how they thought the game is what changed it. Right? Winning changed it. Mm. You got to remember, if he doesn't win a championship, he's no different than Steve. What's Steve Nash? Yeah. Steve Nash and them. What's the difference? Right? But they didn't win, so it wasn't adapted. Mm. It wasn't adapted. He wins. The NBA says, that's what we want. We want that right there. You, well, you don't have Steph Curry. <laughs> you don't have Klay Thompson. Right? So you can't do that. You know, that, that, that does not work for your team because that's number one and two right now. I mean, when you look at the Warriors right now, they're actually getting off to kind of a slow start. They're 14 and 13 right now. Whereas the Nets... Even with all the drama and the dysfunction and everything else like that, they're actually fourth right now in the East, 16 and 12. It's the East, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said 14 and 12? Well, the, the Warriors are 14 and 13, and the Nets are 16 and 12. Yeah. But I mean, like, Golden State winning a championship last year 
was, I don't know if Curry or any of them have said it, that w- that should be probably, besides the first one, that should probably be their best championship because it was not expected. Hmm. It was not expected. They did not think they're going to, Clay just coming back. You got a young Jordan Poole. You know what I mean? You don't know what to expect. You're probably trying to just make playoffs, right? Yeah. And you guys pulled out a championship with a half clay. Yeah. I mean, impressive. You know, Gary Payton II yeah, started to kind say, of get his legs. Yeah. That's impressive. There was points where Curry wasn't even – like Curry missed some of that season. And George, like that, that, that is – you. Hey, whatever happens the following year, hey, we don't. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, boys. Y'all did what y'all needed to do. That was that type of championship. Like back doing back to back. It's like, nah, I don't think so. Because we didn't even we didn't even see this one coming. And it came and those boys did their thing. Yep. Yep. And uh I mean, do you expect them to do it do it again this year? You know, they had a bit of a slow start, but it's still early in the season. I, I don't I wouldn't bet against I wouldn't bet against Curry and Clay. Like you gotta remember, Clay is still trying to find out, find himself again, um, trying to find out what his game is now, and when he do, that's the problem. We already know what Kirk's got, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? You don't th- five we, full court shots. That's what I said. We we're not <laughs> like, ball, like, 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 like we're at this point. <laughs> we're, at this point, we're surprised he does miss, right? So you you have him already in the element of. The, the the his confidence is there's nowhere to be found at this point. Um, Draymond's gonna do what Draymond do. Um, Poole is playing, you know, um, a, a type of game that's you know the only the only person that's stopping Poole is the ref, right? <laughs> and, uh, there's no yeah. there's no human right now, you know, defending this dude. So it's the refs. You know, the ref is gonna let him play. Like let the defense, you know, guard him. Stop trying to blow the whistle on everything that's a, you think that's a carry. Let the let the defense play defense on him and stop helping the defense out on bullshit that does not affect the the play. Um once Wiseman kicks on and Wiseman can be a dominant force, they are gonna be a favorite. So the second half of the season, there might be this point where this this team goes 15-20 in a row. Mm. They have yeah. the, they have the personnel. Well, they've done it before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, are you surprised that Steve Nash got fired from the Nets? Steve Nash? Yeah. No. Not surprised. No. And the reason I say this is he was given a gold mine and the gold was not there. Right. Right. It has nothing to do with him. The gold was not there together. It was, wasn't one of those things where they played, you know, 70 plus games with each other every year and he just failed as a, a, a coach. So all that, all that mostly happened was when Kyrie opted out <laughs> and, um, and Katie said, I wanted to be traded. And they said, there's hey, hold on, hold on guys. All right. Okay. Okay. Ooh, calm down. Uh, what needs to be happened? You know, what, what are we going to do here? And they're like, well, get rid of him. Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to do it publicly. You know, we, we're we we're here for Steve Nash. And then, you know, <laughs> then it eventually let's, you know, see how the season, you know, how the, it starts off. And then we'll fire him at the beginning of the season. I mean, do you see the Nets, I mean, finally getting to where they're supposed to be? You know, I they mean, have the pieces. They have the pieces, they have exactly. The, you know, they have the pieces. At the end of the day, it's, it's, it's one of your pieces that you're banking on didn't play for a whole year, right? Well, he has to get his mojo and confidence back in Ben Simmons, um, you know, especially offensively. Um, defensively, you don't have to worry about the defense. He's going to take that challenge every single night. So it's, you know, it's one of those things is once we get to the playoffs, anything can happen. You know, matchups, you know, like, you you know, it's, it's basically with, with Golden State, and with the Nets, it's like getting into the playoffs and then matching up with a team that you're overmatched with. Charles Barkley, he called Kevin Durant insecure. And uh, Kevin fired back, called him a clown. Uh, I mean, Barkley's point was that uh, Durant 
like reacts, you know, answers to what he calls every fool and everyone with a burner phone and so forth and argues with people on Twitter and so forth. Coming from guys who did the same thing when they played. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's a, it's, it's, it's the, it's like you did the same thing. Yeah, he said, uh, you know, and actually uh, Durant said, I think it's insecurity when you go on TV trying to take shots at my character as a man, but fuck it, I'm, I'm an ignorant jock. What do I know? You got to remember, there was no social media, right? Yeah. Oh, Barkley's social media back in the day would have been thank you a circus. Thank you, but that's what I'm saying. So you're a circus. You're you're, you're 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 talking trash about him for doing something that you did to during the platform you had, right? Is that you had a platform and that platform you was a wild man. Yeah, <laughs> he was a wild man. Like so, that's like Dennis Rodman talking about James Harden clubbing. No, no, we, we, we don't want to hear. We don't want to hear that from you, my guy. <laughs> we, don't, we don't. You know what I mean? It's just, it's it's spotlighted now. You know, so you guys, like the, the older guys, sometimes forget who they were when they were that age. Yeah. yeah. Now I feel you. Uh, Deion Sanders, he left his HBCU for Colorado. Prime time. Prime time. Mm-hmm. Some people got upset over it, you know, because, I mean, look, he came in and made a big statement about HBCUs, and a lot of players came to basically, you know, a lot of star players from high school could have gone to big schools, but instead went, you know, to play for Dion. And they won for two years. And they won. Mm -hmm. Right. He took them a championship, uh -huh. everything else like that. And now he's moving on. People are calling him a sellout and everything else like that. Who? You know. Everyone who's calling him sellout didn't help Right? They didn't help. I'm pretty sure. Now, listen, I, I personally No him, one man. helps. Listen, the people who talk the most shit and yeah. who are the angriest at the decisions you make- Have done nothing. Done nothing. Yeah. Right? When the man was asking for help, hey, listen, we don't get paid here. My staff don't get paid. These black men aren't being paid by- the, I have to give up half my salary to keep this oh. all-star team. That's what happened? Yes. Oh. To keep my coaching staff- Oh, I have to okay. give up half my part. salary. No I one. So I need help. I need some of these boosters to come back. Right. Now y'all play like y'all don't hear me. Mm. All right, fine. Like, I can't feed, listen, <laughs> I can't feed my coaching staff with a movement. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right? I can't feed them with a movement. <laughs> like, I, I, like, these guys, like, I remember, the coaching staff and the helpers who were believing in this man aren't being paid at, at some point. They're going to the say, school. Yeah. at some point they're going to say, Hey, come on. Hey, prime. We don't want two championships. What they saying up there. Yeah. They, mm, they, they, they still trying to come up with the money. It ain't trying to, they ain't trying to, you know what I mean? So he, you know, you can be mad at his decision, but I guarantee you there's 40 staff members that are sitting there like, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We have benefits. <laughs> We can sleep at night. Yeah. We can put our kids in school. We can, there's a 40 black, black men <laughs> that are proud of what he, what he did. Put him in a position to actually, you know, be something. Like if you're not, if you're not happy at what he did, then you should have been supporting. You know what I mean? Yeah, Cause you gotta I remember mean, there's, there's, there's going to be other Deion Sanders. Yeah. You know, Mo Williams got his first win over where he's at, right? When he goes 12-0 and and 15-0 and and he wins a championship, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to are you gonna get the money and build? Like, I remember, these are college kids. This is, how am I telling? You got to remember, to convince a number one prospect to come there with the facility you have is impressive in itself. Hmm. So if he got number one players there, the hell you think he's gonna do in Colorado with that fucking facility he got? <laughs> yeah. You think you think that you think those that, he fucked the portal up, right? All those kids start transferring. Yeah. yeah, he has now he has something to offer. He sold them he sold them championships in this vibe. Yeah. Now he has now he has the backing. Yeah. So you can only blame you can only blame yourself. You're using that's what I said. It's like. 
He didn't use ja Jackson State used him. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right? He he's negotiating. He's trying to negotiate with you guys. This is where he wants to stay. So if you're not trying to negotiate and you think you're not gonna leave us because it looks bad on you. Mm. Until he leaves. Yeah. So you're trying to pull that car. Oh, it's gonna look, oh, you're a black man, you're gonna look, oh, it's gonna look bad on you. The black community's gonna turn on you because you're leaving us. I'm like, all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, yo, like, he's won two championships. You see, he can pull number one players. He can pull top prospects. He can do this. He's proved it. Pay that man. Well, he's also an icon. I mean, Deion Sanders, you could almost say, is he transcends football. Yes. People who do not watch football know who Deion Sanders yes. is. Mm -hmm. Like me, I don't really watch football, mm -hmm. but I know exactly who Deion is. Yeah. I grew up watching him. Like, I grew up watching his commercials and, you know, I mean, like the whole nine. Yeah. He's a... Must be the money. Like, yeah, 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 music videos and everything. He's an like, icon. Yeah. There's, there's yeah, he's, a, he's an icon. He's a legend. So, yeah, I mean, any school that gets him is lucky to have him and to just assume that he's just going to stick around without being treated fairly is just silly. But, that, but that's what we expect mm. because we didn't have, we don't have nothing to, in, like, oh, yeah, I've donated to HBC. Did you donate to that one, though? Did right. you donate to that one to keep him there? The answer is no. Then shut up. That's true. All right? You you have no you have no voice in this fight right here. Yeah. Like I, if you want to hear people, like, let's hear his coaching staff. Let's see what they say. If they're like, yeah, we love this move. Then that's all that matters. You know what I mean? If we didn't, if you didn't put a dime towards that organ, if you didn't go and celebrate with him like Gilly the Kid, we can see the celebrities. He pulled celebrities there. Show me another school in the country that's pulling the celebrities there. Not in Mississippi. <laughs> Not in the deep south like Anywhere. that. Anywhere. Yeah. How many, how many celebrities been at the Alabama game or the Georgia game? No, that's true. Are they, are, like, he got to remember, he embraced a culture. He showed these kids, listen, hey, hey you like Gilly the Kid over there? Come on, Gilly. You like uh, Chopper? Chopper? Come on, Chopper. <laughs> like, he's he's showing these young kids, how, what it, like, this is, this is what I can do. And they're believing in this man. So, sorry, there's nothing. <laughs> it's a good job. Larsa Pippen, dating Michael Jordan's son. Mm. You know, I, I thought the Kardashians really had a, a chokehold on this type of thing, but <laughs> lo and behold, mm -hmm. you see more weird kind of, I wouldn't say incestuous, but, you know, <laughs> along those lines where you got two teammates and now the ex-wife of one of them is dating the son of the other. It's, it's, it's a mess. It almost should be like a nephew kind of situation as opposed to a dating situation. Do you find anything weird with that? Or do you think that's just regular? <laughs> How old is she? Let's look it up. 40s? Like, I don't... Like, I, I know it doesn't matter, but no, it just... No. Okay, hold on. And then... It, 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 it matters, but it doesn't matter. Uh, she is 48. Exactly. And he is 16, that 16 years old it, right now. Yeah. I'm, it I'm joking. No, he's 31 years old. I'm joking. That yeah. makes sense. She is 48 and he is 31. That makes sense. 17 year difference. That makes sense. What 48 year old man, wealthy, got money? Dating a 31 year old? No. It's happening millions of times across the world right now as we speak. No, no, no. I'm just saying, what is a 40 year what 48 year old man? Would date a 31 year old female? No, 48 year old female. I'm sure plenty are married to women no, their own age. No, what I'm saying is she's a single woman. Who's gonna who's gonna be attracted to her at this point in her life? Younger men. You think? Yeah. So you don't think a 50 year old man would be interested in her? Why? Because she needs that, she needs the attention. She needs someone who's going to look at her like she is the prize trophy. The only person that's going to do that is a young generation. Hmm. Oh, Scotty Pippins, Scotty Pippins' ex-wife. Right? Come on, Scotty. Like that, that. That's the. Come on, that's the only person going to get. No, fifty-five-year-old man is going to be excited about. Come on. There's going to be younger men. To, to, if if it, that, this doesn't work, going to be another younger man. But that's the... That, well, that. yeah. I mean, she, who was she dating before? She was dating another NBA player. 
that was younger that as well. Yeah, yes, that's because that's the only she's a cougar. Hey, but that's the <laughs> only. I mean, that, at this point, that's the only people that's going to give her the attention that she's probably seeking. I don't know. Right. Her. I mean, remember she was messing with Future yeah. before. Oh yeah, you're right. It's all. It's going to be all. It's going to be in the 30s, 35. You know, because 20s, once she's maybe late teens. <laughs> no, nah, I don't think she's going to. <laughs> You know, like people who like, it's like more the name, like, oh, that's Scotty Pippen. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's the. Well, yeah. I mean, look, Cher is dating uh, Amber Rose's baby father, and there's a 40 year age difference between the two. But she he's is, the only one who's going to look at her yeah. for. She is 76, and he is 36. He's the only person who's going to look at when her she for. She was 40, he was born. <laughs> it's the value. It's the value. Who's going to look at me in the value that I think I am? It's hmm. not going to be someone my same age. It's not going to be someone that respects Pippin, that grew up on Pippin. That it's just is going to be some a young dude that's just like, yeah, I got an old lady. I got an old lady at home. <laughs> she does some things in the bedroom, hey. <laughs> <laughs> is he gonna? Yeah. I mean, it's not like they're gonna get married or nothing and shit like that. Is it? Come on, we know that already. Yeah, they're just having fun. Yeah, and you know, yeah. I mean, look at uh, him. Hey, listen, it gives him some credit. Yeah. Was taking down forty eight year old. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, the uh, I mean, Kim Kardashian, Pete Davidson. She is in his in her forties, and he is in his twenties. I think Pete's that, Pete's that young. Hold on, no, Pete Davidson, age twenty nine. Mm-hmm. I seem like he's been around so long as a comedian. She is forty two. I was right, forty two, twenty nine. I mean, you know, comedians start young a lot of times, you know. Eddie yeah, Murphy yeah, them started like, teenagers yeah, and so yeah. forth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she got she had a dude in his twenties that was beating it up. It's Kim Kardashian. It's Kim Kardashian. Oh, yeah. You know <laughs> what I mean? I think that most men would at least want that notch. <laughs> you yeah, know I mean, what I'm saying? Like, Just to say, I mean, Kanye did. had listen, listen. Kanye had no like this was going. It was going to always be a disaster because <laughs> whoever she went after is going to be all in. For it. it's Kim Kardashian. It's Kim Kardashian. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, man. Uh, have I? No, nah, I've dated older women. I mean, yeah, older women bring something to the table. They they bring experience. They they <laughs> they do tricks in the bedroom that you know you weren't aware they even existed. <laughs> and uh, you it's, know, it, it, like as a younger man, as a younger man, I'm pretty sure it's easier because you don't have the the young person nagging, right? You don't have that young. That 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 young girl nag when you're dating mm. an older woman. Young you don't have the young girl nag. Oh, who are you talking to? Who's on the phone? You didn't text me back. And, you know, <laughs> them older women already been. Look, look <laughs> listen. Society done already beat their ass up. So they <laughs> they're what? looking for a man that's looking for a job at this point. You know, they don't really care about all that. You know, you I see you when I see you type of vibe. You heard about uh, Ben Gordon? Got arrested Vagrant. for stabbing random people. Wait, come again. He stabbed random people. You heard about this at all? No, but I, I've I know his history. And what is his history? I think he uh, it might be bipolar, right? Yeah. Okay, so like he's a real bipolar. It's not that Kanye bipolar, that that fake one. This is a real bipolar. <laughs> yeah. So apparently he was arrested. He was just walking around stabbing people with needles. And he got arrested. Uh, do Do you know him personally? Yeah, we've we've talked, we've trained. Okay, you guys play on the same team. Or? Mm, mm, I just okay. trained at the gym. Okay, and he was always off, is what you're saying? No, you got okay. So when you're bipolar and you're an athlete, you got to remember you can you can run down the rabbit hole of that sport, getting better, mm. watching film. Like, you know what I mean? It's There's so many things that keep you occupied and that under control. You got the medical staff. How's it make sure you're going to get the medicine every day? Like you, you have, you have this wall around you where you don't have episodes because you got to remember you're being monitored every day. Yeah. Right. You, you could be in monitor before games or we're going to get the, like, you know what I mean? So even if you have an episode here and there during practice, whatever, it's still manageable. But when these players are done, Who's Yeah, they get thrown out there. Who's giving him this stuff? So now you're gonna have a guy who hasn't been on his meds two, three weeks. You gotta remember, them two, three weeks, he's never had that in his life. Mm. 
this is a whole new human being. Yeah, he's Ben Gordon, but this is a Ben Gordon that no one's no one knows because he's never been this person. You know, so it's like, you know, like it's more medical than it is like he's a bad guy. He's not a bad guy. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Kanye's going through the same thing. No. You know, even even Dame Dash said that. You don't think so? No. You don't think Kanye's off his meds? He is not bipolar. I mean, I know someone that has known him for over 20 years. Very close. So I'm not going to say who it is because of a private conversation. And he said he is bipolar and he gets off his meds from time to time. And that's when you usually see these episodes. He's like, he takes meds. He's yeah. prescription bipolar. Yes. Huh. Yeah. That's what he told me. This is someone I, I've, I've known myself for like 10 years. I mean, it could. I mean, he has the this, behavior. This, this, this was not someone clout chasing. This is a personal conversation of someone very, I mean, he, very. But you close. would think he's on the, the, just the way his energy is. You know, he's on the he's on the um, the spectrum of something. Yeah, exactly. But like even like somebody like Delonte West, same. Yeah, I mean, Delonte is very far gone. No, but it ain't it ain't because he's it's him. It's like once he's done, and no one's making sure he's getting his medicine. Yeah. where he can stay. You know, I'm going to stay focused. Yeah. I mean, look. You know, it's... it's Hang on Skid Row in downtown LA. You but it's not because he wants... It, it's it's because he wants to because he doesn't want it to. Like, you know what I mean? Like, when you're dealing with bipolar, like, it's... It's different because it's uncontrollable. Listen, I, I had a very close friend, Disco D, who was bipolar. Uh, I saw him have his episodes. He would suddenly just flip out and act erratically and upset people around him and it ultimately ended with him hanging himself in his mother's house. Hmm. You know, he was going through a, a serious financial situation. He couldn't afford to keep his apartment. He moved back in with his mom. He was depressed. Me and him spoke about it and ended up killing himself. Hmm. You know, bipolar disorder is is serious. Yeah. I never, I never downplay it. And, you know, walking around Skid Row, you know, downtown LA, you see these episodes, mm -hmm. you see these people like that and you ignore them because they're homeless people. But if you give them a Kanye megaphone and listen to everything they say, it'll probably sound kind of similar yeah. <laughs> to some of the nonsense that Kanye saying, saying his mom was sacrificed and Jordan's dad was sacrificed. And, you know, I mean, he's called Jay-Z the feds. And, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's but, paranoid. But it's, it's, it's paranoid, erratic yeah. behavior. I but mean, now, like, but imagine about, but that's what I said. Imagine that like an athlete is worse. It, it, well, because, you got to remember because you got to remember to be in the NBA, to be in football, you had to be controlled for long periods of time yeah, to tap into your greatness, right? So if you've been taking medicine constantly for 15, 20, 25 years, and then all of a sudden you stop. Cold turkey, yeah. And it's like that, the, whatever comes out, it's like, whoa, we don't know what this is because know what it's it never yeah. been... He's has never been there before. See, with someone like Kanye, it's like week on, week off, week on, week off, week right, on, week right. off. Because everyone always tries to find the genius in everything Kanye does. And I like to remind people that he canceled his entire world tour during a rant on stage. Remember that? For 10 million bucks. Yes. Well, I mean, that tour was probably going to generate hundreds of millions of dollars. But he got at? paid 10 It was the Lords of London's lawsuit. Right. That the only way he'd get out of that lawsuit is somehow he went mentally ill. Okay, but I'm saying <laughs> he had a tour, a world tour that was already booked. Venues were put aside. Staff members mm -hmm. were hired on. Like you're talking about tens of thousands, well, including the fans who bought tickets and made arrangements. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of people who are whose time and money is affected by this action. And during a, an emotional rant, he says, fuck this tour, I quit, and meant it. That is not what a sane person that, does. Yes, it is. So you think he did that on purpose? Yes. To get out of the tour? Yes. For $10 million? Yes. That's not a lot of money for Kanye. Now think about it like this. He would have made more off that tour. California, he did seven shows alone in California okay. during that time. 
Think about who he is, right? As a person who needs to move, right? He needs to keep going. And you are being burnt out already. Now you have 11 more months of the same one tour, but mentally you're trying to start a whole nother project. And your language says mental breakdown is the only way you get out of it. And that happened to happen. So you have a mental breakdown. <laughs> so you have a mental right. breakdown. I, I and then you're like, so the, I don't even know if that case, look, see if that case is uh, solved there. I mean, um, uh, settled. Settled. And I know they're like, because that's remember when he died. So you got to remember during that whole time he dyed his hair. He became, you know, I'm bipolar. I'm taking my meds. I'm meeting with. Well, back in 2018, they've amicably resolved that lawsuit. Okay. Whatever that means. It's a $10 million lawsuit. It's been resolved. That could mean anything. That could mean they walked away with nothing or yeah, someone walked away with a ton was, of money. It was, it was about the, they were fighting over Yeah, that. so Kanye sued them, yeah. citing that his treatment at the psychiatric center meant that he'd get out of it. <laughs> Told you. Yeah, man, listen, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it, was more, it was more about creativity, man. I, that's a, that's I why when, when, I, I, guess. when I, when I see stuff with him, it's like, uh, it, unless you talk to him directly and you know yeah. the plan, it's just... You're just, you're just getting hit with it and you got to try to figure out what's what, what's what. I mean, what do you think about the whole Antonio Brown thing? I think he really has. I mean, he, he there was like a, like a police standoff because he wouldn't get out of his house. Did he ever find him? Did he ever get to him? I'm not sure. <laughs> Is he still at the standoff? Because I mean, what it was, was the police didn't want to go into the house and risk the safety over a misdemeanor, misdemeanor. essentially. Right? Because I guess like he... Like the story I heard was he threw something at his baby mother and it hit her ponytail or something stupid like that. Like he didn't actually even beat her up. Like it was it just hit her pony. It didn't hit her. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It just sounds stupid. But I mean, listen, I've I've dealt with Antonio Brown before. Um, we were supposed to have two interviews, both of them crash and burned <laughs> beyond recognition. Uh, you know, we've spoken. We, we we've DM'd each other, and you know, we he he wanted to kind of fix it. But my thing with him is that he's so erratic. Mm -hmm. and just d but being in I mean, being in sports the behavior he's showing now right we can see what it's doing to what it did to his career then how was he great well because what like was you this said what he was, was this in behavior? a controlled environment like I said, right? where was this Tom behavior Brady then? brought him to Tampa Bay before that because we've seen the behavior be getting to this. Yeah, with the Raiders and where, everything. Where's, yeah. where's this er, where was this in his early years? College, the beginning, be, be, when he became who he is. Where was this behavior? It wasn't there. So you think it came later? So it came later. So you think it's the CTE thing? Probably. Because you got to remember, the way he's acting right now or in the last four or five years, there's no way he would have became Antonio Brown, the man we, we knew. Well, but to be fair, the money started to die down near the end, right? Remember when he went to Tampa Bay and he talked about this, they gave Tom Brady a big, huge contract, multi-year and so forth. They gave him a one-year contract with a bunch of stipulations. Yeah, but that's, already, that's after the fact already. He's already, he's already losing it. Remember, right, yeah, he lost it in the Raiders and everything else. Yeah, but that's that, what I'm yeah. saying. He's already losing it. Where where did this behavior come from? Because this, you got to remember, we've seen what happened that last year in Pittsburgh and then going. That that makes sense. This career makes sense. This These last four years make sense to the behavior. Yeah. How come this didn't happen before? Somebody like, um, was it Josh Gordon? The reason Josh Gordon isn't one of the all-time greats is because his behavior has been there the same from the beginning. He's been the same. You know what I mean? They've taken the chances, but the behavior is going to keep keeping them. Well, what did Josh Gordon do that was, that was so bad, though? Like he, I don't even know if he's ever played a full season. Right. I, mean, I remember him and Odell Beckham got into it. We, mostly, we, we interviewed Josh, most, we interviewed well, mostly Josh Gordon. But, uh, was it Josh Gordon called him Flash, right? I believe so. Let me see. He, he was with the drug problems. Suspended for drug, weed, every other year, every year. Um, Josh Gordon. What is it, Josh? Is it yeah. Josh Gordon? Did he have drug problems? Is it Josh Gordon? I don't think so. The receiver. Yeah. Yeah, that's his whole, yeah. 
No, you're right. Yeah, yeah just absolutely right. Yeah, they, the, I mean, the, the, from who he's supposed to been. He was supposed to have been that man. He was that far above everyone else yeah, I mean, Jay-Z, physically. Yeah, Jay-Z rapped about it. Yeah, physically. But you got to remember, his behavior from college, beginning of the football career, like it, there's a reason he's not at the pinnacle of who he is. How did Antonio get there if he had this problem before? So no, I see I'm pretty saying. sure yeah. he got, he got it's the, the, the CT started affecting him. And, you know, at this point, it's like, you know they need to really like do, yeah, not jail, but let's 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 really see what's going on, because it's it's so. Yeah, I mean, it's so pulling, apparent something's going on. Yeah, he's pulling his dick out in Dubai. I mean, yeah, like, <laughs> come on, like, what was this behavior <laughs> before? Selling people <laughs> fake watch. You know, he doesn't. You don't pull a dick out now, and you didn't pull it out when you was twenty. Like, I, <laughs> right. You know, when you're that's twenty, twenty year old, yeah, twenty. That's what you, know, you pull out your dick when you're twenty years old. <laughs> Did you uh, see the video of the Terrell Owens uh, fight? Yeah. At the CBS? Mm -hmm. I don't know why anyone would want to step to Terrell Owens like that. I mean, he's, I mean, you know, I've been around him before. That's a big motherfucker. Like, but, and the fact that, you know, he was so calm, like, you know, it was like he's trying everything, like, come on, like, if you don't want this, let it go. Yep. Let it go. But, you know, from just from hearing the audio, I guess that dude, like, was like, I'm gonna get famous. Yeah, he got famous. Hmm? Well, I mean, did he get famous though? I don't know. No, I don't know. You don't yeah. even know who the fuck he is. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you personally, do you ever get fucked with when you're out and about? People recognize you and just wanna no. talk shit? No? No, no, no. I don't have that personality. I've had, I mean, let me see. I yeah, all the like, time. Hey, how you doing? What's happening? I, you know, I'm that guy. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how's your mom? She good? Okay. I'm, I'm that guy in the public. I, I had one guy at an airport walk up to me and talk shit to me. But I think it was more based on the girl that I was with. I think he was like looking at, you know, like we kind of pieced it together afterwards. Mm -hmm. Like he was looking at her. He was trying to get her attention. And then when I walked up, he saw that we were together. I think he felt some type of way about mm -hmm. that. He recognized, realized who I was. Mm -hmm. So he walked up to me and started talking shit. And she was just like, come on, let's go, let's go. Like, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm, we're, we're not gonna. And it wasn't even like aggressive. It was like him just talking shit about my business. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I thought he was a fan and he came up and started talking shit. But as a whole, yeah, man, I think like people think that everywhere a celebrity goes, not that I consider myself a celebrity, but just knowing people go that everyone's always attacking them or trying to fuck with them. In general, people just want to take a picture take with a you. Pic take a picture. Um, tell you they love your work and yeah, like moving, you, it, but. it's it's like you you have to have that energy Right. Yeah. You have to have that type of energy where someone is coming to fuck with you. Right. You know, I mean, like, you know, like for, for the most part, like. Like certain celebrities, you're going to be like, they don't need a bodyguard because they don't have that. They don't have that. I'm I'm better than you uh, type of image. But you never know. Like, for example, Flavor Flav got jumped in Vegas and he's like the nicest guy ever. Why do you jump? I don't know. What was he saying? What was I, I'm, I'm like, not sure. You know what I mean? It's like I'm not sure. You're right. I don't. I don't know what led up to it. I don't know what led up to it. You know, what I mean, and you know, Flav has had his drug problems over the years. Yeah, so, yeah. so I don't know. You know, he said he's been clean for two years. This happened. Like about, nobody's yeah. nobody's beaten up on the weekend. Okay. No one's gonna yeah. jump the weekend. No I, one's gonna jump J. Cole. I don't uh, <laughs> Right so it's like because he doesn't have that energy. He doesn't I, I don't know, man. I, I think I think in today's Like if you had jewelry on, then yeah, someone's that's an opportunity to rob you. Yeah, I mean listen, but, people fuck with the baby everywhere he goes. Because it what is he, he rap? He puts out his but that's what I'm that saying. energy, what is, right? You know, so the you know, J. Cole, like, he can go anywhere and be cool because he don't have that standoff energy he's not rapping yeah. about when i see you in public he's not that's not him true you know what i mean so there's a reason that singers are not getting jumped everywhere well i mean but terrell, they sing. O terrell <laughs> owens isn't out there beefing with people and talking no, shit. He, he was he was minding his own business I've, I've been around him he's a quiet low-key guy yeah, like, he might have been an eagles fan who knows <laughs> <laughs> he might have been a donovan mcmath fan right who knows? You know I mean? right <laughs> they're saying mexico city might be the next place where they have an nba team do you see that? Not Vegas? They're saying Mexico City. Can you imagine a pro NBA team in Mexico City? No. <laughs> I mean, you got a team in Toronto. Uh, 
okay, then yeah, I can. Mm, yeah, I mean it's 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 close enough, you know what I mean? Yeah, so uh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. It's possible. Yeah, look at this. They're basically saying, uh, ba 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 ba. They've already played games there, right? Yeah, they're saying that the NBA could bypass Seattle or Las Vegas for Mexico City and add a new franchise there. Because remember, they're saying they're gonna, uh, you know, bring bring the team back to Seattle, the Supersonics. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't be Gary Payton. He was saying how, yo, it looks like it's going to happen. Because of the fans. And I've been working very hard to get it back. So you're trying to get that, or a new team, I guess? Yeah, uh, yeah we're going to just try to get an expansion team. Expansion team. And I think an expansion team is going to happen. I think with Adam Silver, who it is, and he knows that, we're going to add some teams. And I think Seattle is one of them teams that he's going to add. And I, I think that they deserve it. As getting a new hockey team there as the Kraken is right now, and making it understand and, and the arena that they just built there, I think it's going to be something that the NBA has to look at. And then I think at the opening of the Kraken's uh, NHL season, they, Adam Silvers was there. And he he, he did mm. the facility. Okay. So I think it's going to happen. I okay. think it's going to happen. And when it happens, it's going to be a great, great thing. I'm going to be a part of it. It's going to be really good. First thing we're going to do is, is retire Deadless Shrimp and Sean Kemp's uh, jersey, and we're going to make a big deal about it. You Are you know? trying to be an owner if there's a new team? Yeah, so I'm trying. I'm going to be invested okay. in that. But Mexico City, man, that that's that sounds wild. It's all about the fans. Will they be pulling fans? Yeah. Will people the fly from the U.S.? I mean, so, I mean, for example, like in Toronto, when, I mean, you didn't play for Toronto, but you play games in Toronto, mm -hmm. though, right? Were there a lot of Americans that showed up to those games? Not necessarily. Not really. No. It's all Canadians. Yeah. Crazy crowd, though. Really? Crazy crowd. Crazy crowd. What, what makes Toronto like so the, crazy? Like, they have, like, they're, they're the type, like, like, those fans are, like, real diehards. Like, it's, mm. like, when you talk about, when you talk about Toronto itself, they take it personal. They don't care if the player average one point. <laughs> like, <laughs> like yo, 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 he sucks. And you will have hate mail like this man was Derek, you know, like uh, DeMar John. I mean, DeMar DeRozan. You would think the guy, like, no, they, it's, <laughs> it's them. So Mexico City, like, they will, I'm pretty sure they're going to take their, their team pride very, you know. Oh, yeah. They're going to lose their shit yeah. in, in Mexico. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean I, like, financially or just for like the global of the game well, i'm i would do mexico city first okay but here's the thing though right i mean i guess it technically doesn't matter but are there any mexicans in the nba are there any mexican players because because but you're open but, but, but you're opening up you're opening up a whole new market i get new, it a whole i new mean market. i get it right but i'm saying like you're giving hope you know, because as a whole, Mexicans are a little bit shorter. You know what I'm saying? Not to say every you're not, every you're not opening up because you're looking for Mexican players. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're, you're saying, trying so to. So you're going to have a team you're trying in to Mexico tap City the, without a single Mexican player. Yeah, on you're that trying team. to tap, but you're trying to tap into that that untouched market money, right? Because whereas, for example, I mean, you you can ask this question better than I can. Are there a lot of Canadian players in the NBA? Mm -hmm. Right. Like who who are the big Canadian players? Um, Tristan Thompson. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> um, um, Wiggins. Right. Uh, right. But can you think of a, there's not a single Mexican or Mexican American player that plays in the entire NBA that I know of. Yeah. That's it. And unless they're really pushing it like that, you wouldn't know. You until, wouldn't know. Yeah. There might be, there might be probably some mixed players that are part yeah. Mexican, whatever, but a full you know what I mean? Like, there's no there's Canelo no Nahara. There, there's the a Nahara. Yeah, there's no Naharas. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, but but you got to we'll remember wherever Nahar, but wherever Nahara went, the Mexican crowd came. They yeah. came, yeah. <laughs> right? So when he came, so you got to remember because he's the only one. Most of everyone, uh, everywhere he went, he had his own fan base. Yeah, that's Shannon. Get him in. Even if, if even if it's the thirty seconds, get him in. <laughs> in. Worth the price you know of admission. So, yeah, yeah. You can only imagine. You can only imagine. You know what what was going to go down. You know. Well, you went back to D.C. and actually reunited with the Big Three. Mm -hmm. uh, and you had been gone for 
11, 11 years. years. Mm -hmm. How did that feel? Amazing. I'm not even gonna lie. Like amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I was. Uh, it, it made me feel like a rock star again. And the three players are yourself. That's it. And that's it. <laughs> all, I'm all three players. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Antoine, uh, Karan Butler, um, and myself. Right. And that was actually the first time the three of you have been together in 11 years. Yes, that was the all last three. time we were all together since um, January 5th mm. when I did the, <laughs> in uh, in Philly, when I did the pistol, pistol movement in Philly. Uh, well, uh, they showed the photo of the three of you together now and then. Mm -hmm. Everyone looked the same except for Karan. Karan looked a little bit older than the rest of you guys. Mm -hmm. Is it because he didn't stay in the same shape as you guys? Or because really, because you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like you and Antoine look damn near identical. Well, you got to remember, I, he, he looks the same to me. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? It's just, you know, it's, it's, you know, you got to remember, we're getting older, we're getting heavier. Yeah. Um, you know, he's training family. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's just, you know, he, he's, he's in a, he has a stressful job. He's an NBA. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, it's a stressful job. Like you gotta train, be upper. You gotta remember his 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 lifestyle is the same as probably even worse. Because you got fuck yeah, you know, thought about it. He has to stay at the gym longer than he did as a player. Yep. Because he's a coach now. Yeah. So he has to do film. This. Wake up. Train this person. So, right. you know, I mean, he's he don't have time to sit there and work out, even though he's in the gym all the time. Right. So, whereas you, um, but to me, it looks the same, though. Come on. Yeah, I mean, listen, you, you wake up and you could not do nothing all day. Yeah, <laughs> train kids. So that's what I said. Yeah. Like you know, his like being 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 in the position he's in, it seems like it's going to be more stressful and and less freedom than you would think. Yeah, to work out, to eat healthy. Because I've seen a lot of day. players, like even like some of the older players that's behind the bench and stuff, and it's like, whoo. Hey, mm. this job is killing y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no thank you on the job, ass <laughs> on staff. Shit. Well, uh, one of my uh, Vlad TV YouTube members, uh, the Ashton, he actually brought up an interesting question for you. He said, uh, in two thousand five, when uh, Allen Iverson uh, stole the inbound and got the game winning point mm -hmm. with the rebound, you were playing that game. Yep, stole it. Come into me. He stole it from you. He stole it coming to coming me. to it you. It was coming to me. It was it never actually got to you. <laughs> yeah, it didn't get to me. Okay, that very moment. Tell me about it. Um, that actually that moment changed the way. Um, I wanted inbounds passes. Okay. Um, because you know most of everything you know you're at the half court hash mark and usually. You're you're on some type of zipper type of play, right? Um, so I'm coming up, and it is Iverson who's little, right? You're, we're not, you know, he's little, so you know you see him here. <laughs> so when you get to go and he's done, ran around somewhere else, you know, you lose track of him because you know everything happens this fast. So you know if I'm if I'm guiding and I'm seeing him here, all right, cool. So when I when I reach to go get the ball, he's done, sped through that. So Moving forward, I said, I do not want the ball coming upward anymore because I don't have no momentum because I have to get the ball, then I have to turn and come back. So I want to either come in angles, come downhill, you know, so it really kind of changed the way that I, I want an inbound passes for the game winner. Okay. What was so different about Allen Iverson than any other player that you played against? Okay. You've you've heard of uh, white boy hard, white boy hard. How, you've heard of white boy wasted, right? They yes. just they get fucking wasted, right? You know the, the, that white boy who really doesn't have talent, but he plays his fucking ass off. Like he's gonna run through a wall. He's he's gonna sweat on you. He's gonna. There's no foul. Like you you can't bully him, right? Right. Now that was him with actual talent, huh? So you're talking about a guy who's gonna come at you a thousand percent all the time right it's, it's just all, like it's just like it's like he had the white boy energy <laughs> the black the black man skill and it's like 
yo, like he's just gonna, he's trying, is he trying to score 60? I don't, like he ha- he's playing like he's trying to score 60, not versus like someone he's, he's gonna get 60. He's playing like he wants 60. And that's a whole different, that's a whole different type of energy. I mean, would you say that he's the greatest NBA player ever without a ring? Without a ring? Without a ring. As an individual. So him, Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing. Mm-hmm. Actually. Well, here, here's, a, here's a master list. Probably, yeah. Here, here, here's the list. I actually looked it up as I'm talking to you. The greatest players without rings. John Stockton. Mm-hmm. Alan Iverson, like we said, Charles Barkley, like we said, Carl Malone, mm-hmm. Dominic Wilkins. Mm-hmm. That's the top five list that they came up in, in a. Um, as far as an individual, individual, yes, he would be probably the greatest, the greatest ringless player of all time. Yep. Considering his height, that says a lot. It just shows you how dominant, but that shows you how hard yeah. this man <laughs> played. You got to remember, if you want to know how good Allen Iverson is, look at the team he took to the championships. That says it all. That says it all. Yeah. If you want to know how great he was, look at that team. Yeah, I mean, you can say the same thing about LeBron. Look at what happened to Cavaliers when LeBron left. Well, that's facts. That's <laughs> facts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember there was like this, like, kind of meme that was going around where uh, it was falsely announced that the NBA commissioner was retroactively giving uh, LeBron the MVP for all the years he had been <laughs> with the Cavs based on their current performance. <laughs> like, you know, that we realize how much you've been carrying this team yeah. all this time, so we want to retroactively give you the MVP yeah, for every year you've been yeah, on that it's team. Like it's, it's, like it's, not, it's not like he really had amazing, amazing teams. Yeah, right. Is th- that's not the case? Like we 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 seen it. They went to the championship. Just just he just left last place. Last place, <laughs> exactly. That let last you know, place that lets you know. Oh yeah. Well, and Iverson recently uh, admitted that his hip hop album was actually pretty bad. Do you remember that whole era when he was like rapping? Yeah. He, he I thought a, I, th- like, I heard him come out with like a like a song and like David. David Stern had it pulled or something? Yeah, because he was talking about shooting people oh. and stuff like that in the song and, and so forth. Yeah. That was a rap back then, yeah. Yeah. That was, and, uh, <laughs> that was I mean, he was the reason why they changed the uh, the clothing guidelines, right? Because he showed up all no, okay, so, baggy jeans, everything else like that. And now players had to wear suits look, after him. The right? clothes they're wearing today is not, as, is not no different than what he was wearing. Then, well, everyone has to wear a suit now, right? No, no. You, you seen fuckers with robes and pajama pants coming to the games? Actual players who aren't playing players. that night. Yeah. Okay, so what they they changed? Because remember they had a rule. Where you no, had when to wear I played, we had a rule. So when Iverson, so back then, you remember Iverson? This is when Iverson was getting his braids. Yeah. And he was looking like Dipset on the bench. Right. right? <laughs> 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 you know, everybody, want, everybody want to be Cam Brown and Jim Schultz. Right? Right. So you know that was the that was the look. But you got to remember, the look coming to the game versus the look on the bench was too different, right? Um. So they put a dress code on, suits or casual clothes that you wear to the club. And I was like, you might want to take the wear to the club part out because that's what they wear to the club, mm. right? So we was wa- we was doing like walkers. We was wearing like the walkers and stuff like that. And then eventually got the suits, which opened up the market. The only people who didn't really wear suits, the, the biggest fight against the um, dress code, like if people, in the, the people who fought against the dress, like they were like, no. I am I, I, Tim Duncan, mm. Dirk Nowinski, Steve Nash. All the white boys. You ever seen them in suits <laughs> <laughs> in that era? That was a fucking word. I was like, I look goofy in this suit. Like Dirk later on tailored up. He started looking at me. But then in that era, they got to mm. remember, they was wearing like, and they're like, well, I come so early to the game and who's going to see me in a suit? Right? And that was the biggest argument. Like when we come to the game, there was no cam in the what's the name yeah. now it's just a fashion show you know but you can see these guys they're that's not 
that's not the, if you read the dress code, if it's the same, it's not what they're. Mm -hmm. So they just don't care anymore. You know, I mean, you got booty board, you know, you got booty shorts, you got all kind of shit they're coming in because who, who it's wear, fashion. Who, who wears booty shorts? I just assume, you know. <laughs> Shorts with boots, <laughs> shorts with boots, like shorts. I mean, with Russell boots. Westbrook is wearing some questionable shit. But that's what I'm I mean, saying. It's the fact that was more off the court. They're coming in I mean? for the fashion. Yeah, you know. So like, like back then, it was no jeans. Mm. You know, it was like suits or slacks. Yeah, you know, office attire type. Well, you said that Kobe talked intelligent trash to you. Explain. So um, I remember we were playing. He didn't talk to me. So we were playing. And, you know, it's like a two-on-one break, and Karan fouls, stops the break. So everybody's like, good job, good stop, stops the two points. So come, Kobe comes over. So we're all like, yo, good, good, you saved two points. So Kobe walks over to him and says, hey, who are you guarding? Uh, you. Huh? How many fouls you got? I got one. So you only got five left? Yeah. Well, you need all six fouls to guard me. And you just wasted one on him. <laughs> stupid, stupid play. Right? <laughs> and, and you had to think about it like, God, he's right. You know, I need all my fouls. And that's the stuff he said. He like, he makes you think about the things you did. Hmm. And it's like, y'all think that's a good play? You got to guard me. You need all six. You just <laughs> wasted one on him. You might as well just let the two points go because you're going to have to... You sitting on the bench, I'm going to get 10, 12 points because you're on the bench because that one foul. Okay. And it's like, ah, that's a point. And he was calling you a one-sided player. Yeah. And what did that mean? So <laughs> you got to remember with, with, with a chess player, right? They think about the whole game. They think about the moves, right? I have an advantage on him. He has an advantage on me. So... He's realizing that I'm not giving him an advantage that he wants, which is I'm not going to guard you so you can put me in a post. You have the height advantage. You have the strength. You have the moves. It puts it as, you know, it puts the team at a disadvantage. So now he has to attack my intelligence to see if I'm going to bite for it. Hey, you want to play one side of the I'm guarding you. Come on and guard me. Hmm. Like, mm, I'm not that dumb. Hang on. <laughs> I'm not that I'm not that dumb. Like you're not gonna trick me to guard you and you get up a couple, six, seven, eight quick points because you're not scoring right now. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get a little heater going on, right? Like, no, I'm not, no. No, I'm not that I'm not I'm not falling for that. But that was his usually that was his his thing, where it's like he's gonna attack your intelligence to see if you're gonna fall for the bait. Like, hey, are you gonna play any defense? Well, you are guarding a switch partner. Come on, come on. <laughs> Come on, yeah, you're just resting. Come on, play the game the right way. <laughs> like, it, and it, it's all bait. Play the game the right way. Would you say that Kobe is the most competitive player you've ever played against? Just a sheer, unadulterated desire to win, no matter what. Him, Jordan, Iverson. Kevin Garnett. Mm. Okay. Duncan, but you know, but you're not gonna get you're not gonna see, you're not gonna feel Duncan's willing to win. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like you know how he like he's playing hard no matter what. He's but but because he's he doesn't say anything. He's like he's like Kawhi Leonard today. He's not going to say anything. He just kills you in a certain different way. But, you know, these guys, the way they play the game, the way their energy is, like you are feel. that's what I said, you're feeling, you know, that, oh, this man. It's like how you how you see Greek the Freak. Like yeah. you see his sheer wanting to win. You know, so, yeah, it's, it's, I didn't have to guard Kevin Garnett, so I didn't, you know, I can hear him. <laughs> I hear him from, you know, <laughs> don't double. Don't double. Let him let him be a man. Let him be a man out here by himself. Don't double. Nah, don't help him now. <laughs> that's don't. what people try to get you. Are you mad enough? No, but you be a man. But, but, but it's funny because you're talking trash, right? You're talking yeah. trash to him, right? And then now you're screaming for help. And he's like, nah, don't, don't help him. Yeah, uh -huh. He put himself in this position. <laughs> He got the ticket today. And, like he's the fun, he's like the one of the funniest trash talkers. Well, uh, your son played Nick Young recently mm -hmm. and scored a 
20 points on him. 20. Yes. You just said it's how old? He was in eighth, he was in eighth grade. <laughs> he was in eighth grade. He was playing adult league and it was guarding. And, and, and I gave Nick the benefit of the doubt that he had 30 something. They sent me the, uh, the score sheet. They both had 20. Oh. Uh. So Nick had only 20. Nick, the former professional NBA player with a ring. Yeah, with a ring. <laughs> your your eighth eighth grade son scored 20, 20 points off. Yeah, yeah. But that's gonna happen though. You know, you're not gonna, you're not because when you're when you're playing in adult leagues and stuff like that, you're not taking it NBA serious. You know, but it's still it's a it's an eighth grader, bro. It's an eighth grader, bro. <laughs> And it's your nephew. That's the funny part. Right. Yeah, because as soon as my son finished the game, he called me. I scored 20 on Nick Young. Mm. Shut up. You did? I said, what? Uh. Right. Uh, so you think that Nick's son could score a 20 on you? No. <laughs> <laughs> With the big glasses? Hell, hell no. Hell, <laughs> hell no. Nick Young's son ain't scoring 20 in a game. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> You know, and I recently had Nick Young. You actually helped set up that interview mm -hmm. for me. What did you think of the interview? I, I liked it. You, you know, liked I mean? it? It, it, you know, it's you know when you're when you're retired and you you know you've been corporate, you know, answering and you get to just basically just be free. It's it's refreshing. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that people kept saying in the comments was that even when we we're talking about like the tragedy of his brother getting killed, you know, early on, which I think a lot of people didn't know that part of the story. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it. It's not like it's, it wasn't covered at some point, but like people just don't know in the modern era what he actually went through. And the fact that he kind of kept a smile on his face, talk, you know, not, yeah, yeah. not yeah. you know, laughing about it, but he, he still managed to sort of stay positive and so forth, talking about it. You know, a lot of people were like, wow. Like, I think they were just impressed by just Yeah, you know, he has, that, he has that energy, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's not a negative, he's not a negative person. Not at all. You know, it's... Like if he's if he's sad or hurt, like it really has to be something tragic going on with him. Because other than that, he has an a upbeat personality. Yeah, and uh, I think at one point he actually called out Michael Rappaport for uh, speaking too much on black people. Did you see that? No. Um, someone had I, I had a I had a I had an argument with with someone about that, and I was like, why they don't talk to white rappers and white, like, I said, that's four, that's two people. Right, I get accused said, of this Yeah, that's constantly. like two people in the industry. That's, those fucking interviews will be more than shit. What's the guy? You got Jack Harlow and... <laughs> yeah, like, why should you just interview white people all the time? Leave us alone. It's yeah. like, <laughs> you can't talk about white people then? Don't talk about the president. Don't, don't talk about corporations. Don't, don't, don't talk about, like, <laughs> it's a ridiculous ask. Yeah, that's what it's I said, a ridiculous like the, ask. That's why I said I don't, I don't really, you know, get into that stuff because it just, it's, it's a double-edged sword. It just, it's a stupid argument on both sides. It's just like, uh, all right, you want me to interview the two white rappers and then I just interview them all, all the time thinking about, why you don't interview no black people? <laughs> I, I get accused. When I do, this. I'm gonna, you know, coach Porter. I, I get accused of this constantly, and it's like, you know, how can we only interview black criminals? And it's like, well, look at all the mafia interviews I have. Well, that that's different. They're, they're Italian. Like, oh, I can't fucking win. Like, you know, what I mean, that's that's why you just, just keep going. Like, listen, you just man, keep like, going. You just keep, you just I'm keep gonna interview doing whoever things. the fuck I want to interview. If you don't like it, you I do get not have to. Watch I get in trouble it. for. Um, well, I get criticized for not talking about issues, big issues. Hmm. And I, I say this. I don't have any knowledge of the situations. And as I will get knowledgeable for what you just told me about, right? You tell me, how about that? I'll just listen to you. Like you want me, you want to tell me a story for me to report it. And I don't know nothing about it. I was like, no, that's not how it, <laughs> I report on the shit I know. And I can back up if someone asks me another question. Yeah. If I, if I can't back up, if I can't back up what I'm saying after a first, like, I don't want to know parts of it. So, I'm not gonna be touching in like someone just got released. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, what did you think, for example? You know, a lot of people, because you know, because LeBron did criticize some of the stuff with Kyrie, but then last couple of weeks, when someone brought that up in a press conference, you know, post game press conference, he said, "How come you're not talking about the Jerry Jones situation?" Mm -hmm. When you look at the Jerry Jones thing about his, his photo being there during an attempt for white students to stop black students from integrating into a high school. 
Jerry said that that was him in the picture. Mm -hmm. He didn't deny it. Looked like him. <laughs> looked just like him, right? He said that he didn't actually participate, but he just was there to see what was happening. Uh, do you think that there should have been more emphasis on this type of thing, or do you think that ultimately it was a million years ago? And okay, this is a this is always slippery slope, yes, right? Very much so. So this is a time before us, right? Right. The 60s, right? Yeah, so I don't know. You and I were not born yet. <laughs> so this was a time before us. That was a time in history, right? That he was a part of. That was a, that's what he lived through. That's what he was a part of. Yeah. Right? He's in a different time frame today. Mm -hmm. So if we're allowed to go backwards to figure out what someone was doing then to judge him now, we're all fucked. Well, I mean, we're all fucked because you got to remember rules change, right? So what we're doing today that seems normal, forty years from now, we could be sitting here like, so uh, yeah, you was a part of this uh, <clears throat> this movement right here, and you're like, oh, well, black only lives matter was a big, it was a good thing then, right? It was a good thing then, right, right, <laughs> right? and and that's that's what that's what going backwards trying to penalize somebody for that. You got to remember, what was going in was normal then. Black Lives Matter movement now is a normal thing. What if it's not normal in 40 years, in 50 years? Well, what if all, they call this terrorism? It's not that normal now. But, you what, know what, what if they call it terrorism? What if that is sanctioned as terrorism 40 years from now? Now, now you got all these celebrities like, whoa, what were you doing back here? And you're sitting there 60, 75 years old trying to explain, wait a minute, hold on. Back then, it was cool. <laughs> you know? So, so for example, right? I, I I had done a tweet that went, yeah, semi-viral, but basically, I said, you know, the reason why it's so silly for Kanye to be supporting Nazis is because when Hitler came into power, all the mixed kids and all the black people they didn't get a hold of in Germany uh, were actually forcibly sterilized without anesthesia mm. to prevent race polluting. Mm. Real thing. Kanye, who has mixed kids himself, had he been living in Germany, they would have been forcibly sterilized. He he does this whole thing about how abortion is bad and everything. Think about sterilization. Yeah. Think about how bad that is. But see, that's a problem. Right? But well, I just want to prove this point. People brought up, well, Time Magazine gave Hitler Man of the Year. What can we? Man of the Year, Time Magazine. In 1938, <laughs> before Hitler became the Hitler that everyone, the world knew and so forth. Yes, at the time he was uniting the country and mm -hmm. making a turnaround. Like you didn't know about his whole final solution and everything else like that. So is Time Magazine bad for giving this man man of the year? No, at the time they were dealing with the information <laughs> that they were given. You know, okay, this is a guy that's turning, you know, Germany around and turning it into more of a superpower after they, you know, are in shambles from World War I. Yeah, okay, man of the year. Mm -hmm. They're not giving me man of the year for putting, you know, all these people in gas chambers. Yeah. But 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 there you but, have it. But that's you're the dealing issue. with like, the information you're given at the time. So So what Jerry Jones is doing there, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, he was there. Yeah. Part of history at that moment in time. Is he there now? You know, that's all I can I can only judge him on. Like we want to handicap. We want to finalize everyone. You want to finalize who a 14-year-old kid is? Like, he, there's supposed to be no growth, no change in his behavior. Yeah. No realizing that was wrong and move a different path in life. I mean, it's not like he's the leader of a KKK. Right. Like, I mean, it's like, I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, you didn't see him with a hood on. Like, I'm trying to figure out where, cross, like, we so. know what he does for a living. Right, we know who he is for a living. So this does if it doesn't match, then what the fuck are we talking about? Because I know who I was at fourteen. Right, I you, you this person went to jail at fourteen. He's 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 this now, but but we're still gonna try to like, we're, yeah. we're still gonna say this is him. Like stop that bullshit. Like it's just bullshit. Like it like that's how I look at it. It's, it's just dumb. We're going backwards in life to penalize people. Then we're all nuts. We're not. We're all not safe. Yeah. None of us are. 
Because we don't know where the world is going. We don't know where the world is moving. So anything we've said, done, did, 40 years from now, we can be put in jail for something we said fucking 30 years ago that was normal. Well, Bill Cosby. Facts. Right? That was an old case, mm. which got unsealed and retried and ultimately reversed once it got into you know the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. Once it became new rules. Well, it wasn't a new rule. It was a judge ended up unsealing and turning over a deal that was already put in place, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I don't know how well you know the story, but essentially what had happened was Bill Cosby had a case, you know, like a, a college student claimed that, that he had uh, basically drugged her and raped her and so forth. It got to court. The DA felt that this case had it gone to a criminal court they would have lost. There just wasn't enough evidence. Mm -hmm. So what he did was that he made a deal with Cosby that basically says, listen, just agree to these things that you had done these things, and I will guarantee that you will not be criminally charged for this, but it will open up the door for a civil suit for this young woman to actually get something out of it. Mm -hmm. Cosby agreed, signed the paperwork, said that there was drugs involved in their meetings and so forth. He walked away and so forth. Once that DA got, uh, you know, had lost his job and someone else got elected, there was basically the the platform. The new DA came in and said, "I'm going to bring Bill Cosby to justice." And the judge and the old DA had a serious beef. So, out of a shot to the old DA, he basically allowed this thing to be unsealed and the rule to be thrown out. And then a new case came, and he got. You know, he got convicted, but then once it went up to the Supreme Court, when it's got appealed to the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, they said, this is bullshit. There was a deal in place. Mm -hmm. This is how our legal system works. Mm -hmm. We do deals. And if you just throw out a deal after the, you know, once there's a new DA or a new yeah. judge, then that breaks down the entire legal system. So yeah. this is why he got out. But just recently, five more women are suing him for sexual assault, one of which was from 1969. I mean, that's like 50 years. <laughs> it's like half a century. This is going to sound, this is going to sound, um, I don't even know what it's going to sound like, but legally, how, how do they prove this? That's what I'm saying. It was a civil suit, right? So, okay. I mean, seriously. I mean, no, but that's my, always been my thing. Like, wait, okay, 56, 26, 36. Where, what's the evidence here for you to even admit? If you just, if you just say, I don't know this person. How the fuck are they going to prove that? How do uh, they prove they, they know they, you? They can prove that they maybe they're in the same place with you at the time. I mean, it's all bullshit. How? I know how it goes. How? I mean, seriously, like, <laughs> like, if you were to, okay, like, I'll, I'll speak for myself. <laughs> if, if I were to basically, if you were to show me pictures of all the women that I slept with 20 years ago, I'm not sure if I could really confirm or deny <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i do like, that today like, like, like did I... yeah no I've, I've had women hit me up on facebook hey remember we went out it's like i do not remember that we went out i have no oh you did this like i do not know who you are huh? like i seriously don't know who you are like I, I, i'm not being funny right now <laughs> i don't know we may have I, clearly i just made <laughs> more of an impression on you than vice versa i don't know who you are like if i think of all the women that i've dated or slept with, or a mix of the two. Like, I honestly probably could easily not remember half of them to this day at 49 years old. But, and then how about one's accusing you of something? Exactly. I don't know you. Yes, what you do you have? You have, what, what do you have? Cell, my cell phone number? You hit me on, you hit me on fucking Facebook. Like, I'm right. not paying attention to you. Like, MySpace. What do you hit me on MySpace? Yeah. Like, what, ev like for, what evidence are you gonna have? Like, what is this? Like, I'm not. But that's the thing. It's like, like most of these cases, I think that's what kind of like, kind of threw it off from the, the seriousness is most of these claims is like, how do you guys prove this stuff? Yeah. Like, are you just saying it so he can settle with you to keep his name out of the public? Like, I'm, you know, I, you know, there's so much, you know, when, when, it, when it's dealing with lawyers and claims, it's more, it's more, we can say it so they can settle versus. We yeah. can prove it because you can't prove nothing from 1950 something. Come on, let's let's 1969. Yeah. 1969. Like, what, what are you gonna prove? What do you got? DNA evidence? What? It's like, come on. <laughs> like, what are you talking about here? 
<laughs> what are we talking about? Like you, like how? Like you're not even gonna there be able to no prove. There were no cell phones right back then. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're not even gonna prove. Were, I know you. I bet you a lot of people didn't have. I mean, were there even color televisions back then? <laughs> like you had black and white television. But that's what right? I'm saying. How do you? No, it's like, crazy. How do you prove this if it's just not a money grab? Because you can't. Well, but see, but that that's the problem. I mean, I remember interviewing Michael Jackson's lawyer, and he was saying how Michael Jackson's biggest mistake, you know, in terms of him confiding with his client, he said was. When that first, you know, young boy sued him over the sexual assault, that people around Michael told him that he should settle. Mm -hmm. He said, "Listen, it's a couple million bucks. Mm -hmm. You're gonna make way more. You could put it behind you and move on and just focus on your career, and this whole chapter will be over." But in fact, the opposite happened. Yeah. Michael Jackson told me in no uncertain terms that settling that case in 1994 was the biggest mistake he'd ever made. He should never have settled it. He should have fought it through a trial. He would have won. It was an absurd case. But he was advised, he told me, by lawyers, by business advisors, to settle it and get rid of it, that he had bigger fish to fry, bigger projects to, to get involved in, that the money would be a drop in the bucket compared to what he was capable of making around the world, and that diverting everybody's attention because of the publicity attached to this civil case was a mistake. Uh, he followed his advisor's you know, suggestions, he paid money, and what it really did was it opened Pandora's box because suddenly everybody on the planet began suing him, thinking they could make an easy buck suing Michael Jackson. I mean, employees were suing him. Uh, people he met on the street were suing him. It was just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. uh, and he told me that was the biggest mistake he ever made was not fighting that till the end. Once everyone found out that, he settles. that this guy settles for millions of dollars, suddenly, and, and, and I'll be honest, like I've interviewed not only his lawyers, but people that knew him and everything else. Like that. And, and listen, people have their own secrets and their own mm -hmm. dark lives, but like, like I remember going through the paperwork when Neverland Ranch got raided and they found all these like porn videos and stuff like that. I'm and I'm and they actually list all the names of this and I'm like, shit, this stuff shit I used to watch. Like <laughs> I still watch. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this doesn't seem like a pedophile or a gay man. Not to say they're the same thing, not to say the same thing, but since he's being accused of molesting boys. You would think there's the, that there was a homosexual mm -hmm. tint in there someplace, but all these porn movies that they found by raiding his home did not match. Were all heterosexual regular porn movies. So where's the gay part? Where's yeah. the pedophile part? Because it's not like you're going to switch it off and watch all adult women and then say, "Oh, I like boys." You know what I mean? Right. But that's it's, it's. I mean, yeah, listen, you could be bisexual. I, I get it. Sexuality but is it was a show, thing, but, but it, was it would show at least some gay parts, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? It, you, you, listen, you, you at least have like a teenage boy porn <laughs> yeah, or something, like something. a barely legal or something of that sort, so, like something. But there was none of that. But that's, but that's what I'm saying. But you know, once you settle, you you you're guilty by default. Yeah, and then from there, to keep your name clean, they're gonna keep coming. That's what I'm saying. If if I make an accusation against someone. It's news. Yeah. Then they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna settle just to keep their name out. Yeah. That's the bad part. Well, yeah. I mean, because we that's talk why that, about that should be illegal. What do you mean? Lying, but it's not. Oh yeah, no. You could accuse anyone of anything, and you don't get that penalized for. And you if you lose, there is almost no get back. Yeah, no. There is almost no get back. Risk. And you know, you know what I think is the bigger problem in the legal system, and you and I could, could relate to this, is that if you go to the UK, for example, and if you want to sue somebody, you have to pay that lawyer, right? Mm -hmm. And whatever you win is all yours. But in the US, it's very different. A lawyer could take on your case on contingency mm -hmm. and take 30%, mm -hmm. which ultimately means that for the person suing you, they have no skin in the game. None. Win, lose, Cost thrown out, it's free. free. It's free. I've been sued by people with fucking these, these <laughs> contingency lawyers, and it's so fucking aggravating. And at the end of the day, like, you end up settling for some little bullshit amount, and, and you know, it ends up being the lawyer's 
waste of time as well because the lawyer is probably expecting all this. Mm-hmm. You know, they get they the hear little, a name. Ooh. they get the little five figure thing. Yeah. It's like shit. Thirty percent of this, I, I could have not taken this uh-huh. fucking case. You know, the lawyers felt stupid at the end, and the person who sued me didn't get very much either. But you know, but, some, but so they get something that's get more something, than what they got. They're more than what they got, and and you don't look at that and going like shit. I've I'm already seventy five thousand illegal bills already in this shit. Do I want to keep going? Do I want to go into depositions? And do I want to go to court? And you know, and then I win, and then what? I countersue to, to get nothing to someone who has nothing, who doesn't even have a job. But see, that's what makes us. That's what makes people guilty. Yeah, because the person who's being sued seems like they're guilty. Seems like they're guilty because they the math. Yeah, the math makes them settle. Yeah, like oh shit, I got like they have nothing to lose. They have zero dollars. And they're gonna take me to court for a year. I'm gonna spend two, three hundred thousand. Yeah. To win what? Nothing. Nothing. Listen, we were in mediation. True story. And they're asking for some ridiculous amount. And we were like, listen, not only we're not gonna pay this, but these accusations are completely fucking false. Mm -hmm. Like all this stuff here is proven that it's just simply not true. You know what the mediator told us? The truth doesn't matter. I'm just here to find a number. Mm -hmm. Find a number you're willing to settle with. They told us to our fucking face that they said the truth does not matter in this room right now. We're just trying to find a number. And we walked out. (laughs) And, you know, way later, we found a much smaller number than (laughs) what they were asking for. And, you know, and everyone walked away annoyed. But at the end of the day, this is just... I think just a a horrible way to do law. And in the UK, you can't do that shit. I'm sure in lots of other countries, you can't do that. But there's, you know, at the end of the day, America's run by lawyers and they're never going to change that. Yeah, people don't know. Like like people who's never been been sued or suing, they really don't understand. Like, like let's say somebody wants 50,000, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to sue you for 50. And I'm like, fuck off, right? And then your retainer, to fight this case. It's 50,000. It's 50,000. <laughs> <laughs> and you're looking at it going like, 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 you'd be like, and then, you know, us men, we're going to say, well, I would rather pay this motherfucker I'd than you. I'd rather pay the lawyer than I'd you. I'd rather pay the lawyer than you. Then we started up and then now we're into a hundred thousand. Yep. And we're like, wait, oh, ho, ho, fuck. All right. Yep. Okay. All right. All yep. right. Let me, let me, let me figure this out. All right. It's better to stop this shit now. Yeah. Because obviously, you have nothing to lose, so we're going to keep going. I might have to pay fucking 500000 and I win. Mm. For no reason. For no reason. So yeah. let me just I go ahead and stop the it. bleeding now. Let me give you a little fucking 50. Let me give you 100. Pay your fucking dumbass lawyer. Like, And it's like, yep. I just spent $200,000 yep. when it could have cost me 50. I just fucking settled and stopped being hard-headed. Right. But that was guilty. Right. And and from the outside looking in for people who've never been sued, it seems like whoever you settle with is because you're guilty and yep. you're just paying off hush money. When, yep. in fa- when in fact, a lot of times you know that you would win it if it came to court, but it's just too expensive. Too expensive. Too expensive to go to court. And Because and my countersuit, we got a, I, I, spent, mm. I spent a million to win yeah. to countersuit for some money I'm never going to see. Exactly. Now I'm paying double. That was my case. So when I when I when I sued my my uh, assistant, mm-hmm. and I said it, I said, "Listen, I'm not I'm not a stupid man. I'm dumb, not stupid. I'm not gonna sue you with my own money to be rewarded to get nothing. Right, right. I'm not dumb. I've, yeah, like you you stole money, right? It's already gone. I'm not gonna get that back." But I'm not gonna sue you. That's gonna cost me more mm-hmm. to get nothing. That's I'm, I lost yeah. double. So what I'm gonna do is let the feds do it. They beat you, right? They beat you. I automatically have a win. I go to I, I go to my financials. Says, hey, you lost. Here it is. This is what I want. Right. Cost me nine. Cost me pounds yeah, yeah, of a dollar. That was slick. You talked about that in our first thing. <laughs> pounds of fucking dollars, my guy. No, you're right. I mean, listen, I, I'm not so happy. Like, you know, um, a couple of big websites that were constantly using my images, you know, without permission and so forth. And, you know, I was like, all right, I could sue them. I could demand this or whatever. And we had a, you know, a discussion about it. And it's like, who the hell wants to go through a lawsuit? Yeah. I, don't, I don't want to go through this shit. You know what I mean? For possibly mm-hmm. getting maybe, I don't know, 50, 100,000, whatever. I'm like, so I just hit them up directly. I said, listen, this is what you're doing. There's literally hundreds of instances of doing this. I'll give you one week to clean it all up. Mm-hmm. 
or you could pay me for every image right now. Yep. Like, we're very sorry. We'll clean it all up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hip Hop DX, I did that with them. Mm -hmm. Media Takeout, I did it with them. Both owners were very open to hearing what I had to say and they took care of it right away because they knew they were in the wrong. Mm -hmm. Everyone's happy. We walked away. No money changed hands. I got what I wanted. Like, they cleaned up. They, they, they said they're not going to do it again. They haven't. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know what I mean? That's how mature people do this yes, shit. Yes, you're right. But if I was broke as shit <laughs> and that 100,000 was, was, was free, a, it was a free lawsuit. It was free, lawsuit, it was it was a free <laughs> lawsuit. I might have approached it a little yeah. bit differently. But the fact that I'm okay financially meant that I could actually have just a, a regular business conversation and we could fix it. Yep. So LeBron asked you to scout Bronny. Mm -hmm. How did that go? So um, uh, Dribble Too Much, Johnny was training um uh Bronny at it was Her it was Heritage Middle School. Um and you know me and Bron's talking. He was like, hey, uh, my son's gonna be over at the can you can you put some eyes on him? Let me know. Cause you know it's Bron, right? You know, his, his, his son's Bronny and he and he's in the media circuit. He's getting ready to play, you know, so people are gonna start judging him. So as a father, you're like you know, is he ready for this type of scrutiny, right? So I, I understood what he was saying without him saying it. So I went there watching his mannerisms and watching his natural raw talent. And then I hit him back and I said, you don't have nothing to worry about, <laughs> right? I said, you know, you guys have the same athleticism. Um, you're probably a little bit taller than he was. Um, your speed is the same, your IQ is the same. Your passing is the same. He shoots better. He dribbles better. Hmm. Right? Um, if he gets to six eight six nine, he's 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 you. Right, but he's six two. He's six two. He didn't he's he didn't run head. anymore. Um, yeah. He's he's a he's a um like when people ask, I'm saying you know he he plays the game the right way, which is this cliche thing, which means he plays smart basketball. He's not gonna. He's not going to do anything. He's not going to try anything flash. He's not going to, you know, uh, look for those hero plays. He's just, he's just going to play, you know, you know, smart sure. basketball. Um, he doesn't, um, you know, because he's played the right way, he doesn't really understand what his engine is. Huh. So if he really want, if he really wanted to score 40 a game, there's no one that's going to stop him from doing it. You think he's that good of a player? At six two, he he's 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 like a Westbrook style. Okay, like I gotta remember, like well, Westbrook is what six five, six, six seven? four, six five. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, think about the motor when he goes, takes off, jumps that okay. power. Bronny has all of that. He can shoot, he can dribble, he can pass. But you gotta remember, he's he's a passer. He's an unselfish player. So he's not gonna go out there and try to score forty a game because he thinks about everyone on the team. Right, but he doesn't have LeBron's body. Like LeBron is what, six eight, six nine? Ten. Six ten. The man ain't been six eight since okay. for him. <laughs> I mean, he's a huge mm -hmm. not only is he six ten, but he's, but he's a three, really muscular, he's really a three, big. Four. This is the guard version. Okay. You know, this is a guard version. If Bronny goes in a lane, drives and jumps, there's really not a lot of kids in the country that's gonna contest it. Okay. And you know, he can't go straight to the NBA because, you know, the amended rule about you know high school players going straight to the NBA is not going to go into effect at 2024, at the earliest. Okay. So he'll have to either play overseas or go to college for a year. Mm -hmm. Do you expect one year from now that he'll actually join the NBA? Um, What's your guess? It all depends. You're talking about a kid who's probably already a millionaire from I'm not, gaming. I'm not, I'm not what talking I'm just about saying that. from gaming. He's a big gamer. Is he? Yeah. Okay. So, and, like, so it's not Bronzer. He he himself is already a millionaire. Right. And he already signed a name and likeness deal. <laughs> but that's <laughs> but, so but that name and likeness, like, he will probably have the best name and likeness deal because it's coming from yeah, himself. Bron. So it's not like he's going to have a percentage where he has to give back to his daddy. So everything that's revolved around him is his own entity. Yeah. Right. He's not like, you know, when we look at other kids, you got to remember Bronny is his own entity. Mm -hmm. Like he, it's daddy and then it's him, right? Like you remember the the the, the video which makes me laugh till to this day. They're shooting in the um, driveway, right? 
And at the end of the shot, Bronny comes to the camera and says, all right, meet me, meet me on this, shot out, boom, boom, boom. And then Bronny was like, uh, Bron was like, what did you say? He was like, if you know, you know. And then bounce, and Bron's face was like, like, what did he just say on my live? Like, Because he didn't know what he said. <laughs> and then he's asking a young boy, what did he say? What did he say? If you know, you know, right? He was telling everybody to meet him on in the chat where he's going to go game. So he's a yeah. big gamer. So it all depends on what he wants to do. Does he want to go to college, get that college experience? Or does he want to go to the G League and, you know, start training as a G League player? It, it really all depends on what experience he actually wants. Um, you know, it, it has nothing to do with this decision. You know, Braun is going to ask him, you know, of course, and they're going to make the right decision. But it's going to be more on what does Bronny want to experience? Like he want to experience the, the, the college lifestyle. Yeah. Right? But you still got to remember this is Bronny James. Right. So yeah. he's going to be the only kid in there with bodyguards. <laughs> and shit. No, that's true. You know what I mean? Like, you know, he has bodyguards in high school. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it's, 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 you know, so he's, that's what I said. It's, you have Braun and his, Bronny has his own little movement himself. So it's, yeah. it's really on what, what, what direction he wants to go. I mean, imagine if him and his dad played on Lakers together. Has that ever happened? A father and son on the same team? I don't think, no. Yeah, I don't think so. No. But, I mean, potentially considering Bronny would be a f more of a fan favorite because mm. it's he—he's he's a kid, so he's gonna have every kid at that game. Yeah, this, this is gonna be every kid at that game. Like, like people think, oh, Bron, you know, Le uh, LeBron only—you know—he's only famous because he's LeBron's son. Kinda, that's what started it. But he's—he's he's his own like mega star. Yeah, I mean, listen, LeBron is thirty-seven, and he's still going strong. I mean, how many more years do you think LeBron has? If you were to guess. Three more years? Think he can play through 40? Him? Yeah. Yeah. You got to remember, Michael Jordan averaged 20 at, 20 at 40. Yeah. It's not like we're not going to see this decline of like 25, 12, 4, 6, and then he's done. Like when LeBron James is done, that last year, he's going to have averaged 20 to 19. He's going to be like Kobe. Yeah. It's good. It's just gonna be like, all right, at nineteen, you know, you want a three year deal? Like, I'm good. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be one of those type of of leaves. It's not gonna be. He had this decline of six, seven, eight points. It's like, nah. Yeah, I mean, look, it's gonna be like twenty six and seven. <laughs> I, I mean, 30, 37. I mean, Bronny is eighteen. You gotta remember, if you remember, twenty one, he could join. He's, the you remember, he's two two more years. He can be in the NBA. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, yeah. well, in one more year, he could be in the NBA, right? No, he has to play or this the senior year. And next oh, year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's still in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay, right. So then yeah, he has to, about a year and a half or so. Yeah. A year and a half he could be in the NBA. Yeah. I mean, imagine that. A father and son. But I think that is the that is the goal. That is so the goal. That so that's what they're gonna be planning for no matter what. So Yep. What do you think about uh Puffy just had uh another baby? I heard about that. It's like, congratulations, you know what I mean? At, at 53. I, I guess the funny part was, and this is something that academics have put out there, and there was a lot of back and forth over this, was that he basically said, Puffy just had a side baby on all his side chicks. <laughs> he had a side baby. On all his side chicks. <laughs> because there was the whole thing about how he's dating young Miami. <laughs> But, like, there's always other girls around. There's, like, you know, 50 Cent's baby mama. Daphne Joy is, like, at his party, like, swooning all over him also. And, you know, he's out with other girls. And, you know, when, like, they did the talk show together, Puffy basically was saying how they're not really exclusively together. So then, like, all this happens and suddenly he has his baby with this other girl that no one knew about mm -hmm. who was, like, 28. And, uh, you know. Yeah, Miami got upset and she started, you know, talking shit to the academics and everything. But like, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting life. Listen, there's just certain men that have um, um, options. They have a lot more options and a lot more money. They can, do, <laughs> they can make everyone side chicks. You know what I mean? There's really, yeah. there's, you look know at, what I mean? Look at Nick Cannon. Every time a new baby's announced. We be like, who is that? I mean, she's fine. Like, who's that? I mean, she's fine. Like, who is it? Like, you who know, you just. That? You know, so, you know, when you're, when you're talking about, like, Puff Daddy, like, f the regular public, like, oh, that's his girlfriend. And you got to remember, it's Puff Daddy. So I'm pretty sure she's lucky that he's, like, 
deciding to be with her. So yeah. whatever their arrangement is, is their arrangement. It's, you know what I mean? It's not for us to figure it out. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure she knew that there was a baby coming. I'm pretty sure she didn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's, who's she going to pick? Yeah. Yeah, it's got a hard upgrade from Puff Daddy. I don't know, so you think like you like I'm pretty sure her uh, her being whatever she is, whatever her title is to Puff Daddy is 100 percent better than being one exclusive person to someone who's startup rapper. Yeah, I mean she got a she got a baby with Southside, the producer. You know who that is? 808 Mafia. Did a lot of future stuff and oh, okay. Drake stuff that, and stuff you know, like that. I, I mean, he's I a listen, major producer, but you know, ultimately the, the relationship didn't turn out, didn't work out, and they're still, you know, co-parenting and everything else like that. But, you know, I guess Young Miami is always so vocal about her relationship with Puffy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it makes for, I, I guess it makes for a laugh. Yeah, she, she, she's very much like, you know, you know, when he's at the award show, she's got a big sign up for him and everything else like that. And then, to go through all that and suddenly he's having a baby with someone else. But but we're pretending that she didn't know and this is like some, yeah. some breaking news for her. I'm pretty sure that she's been dealing with it the whole time. So Yeah, man. I so, mean, I mean, it's at the end of the day, we don't know what their relationship is. So we it's, don't know. But we can just assume know. it is Puff Daddy. It is Puff Daddy. <laughs> right. And listen, once you get to a certain point in your life, uh, in your career and your wealth, You'll really be surprised. I think. I mean, I think the average working man probably doesn't quite understand this, but like, women are just. If you are totally honest with your situation with a woman and tell her that I like you, but I have this other situation, so our relationship has these limits around it, mm -hmm. you'd be surprised how many women are totally cool with that. On the facts. <laughs> Just that's why I don't understand. If you got money, don't lie. Completely, yeah. You ain't got to lie about shit. <laughs> you women are totally cool with just being people. I mean, people are naturally yeah. cool. You give them a decision to make. So, exactly. you know, if it's Puff Daddy, I'm like, listen, I got a, you know, I got a few. I'm gonna take care of you. We're gonna have fun when I'm with you. But I still have other arrangements. And you know, she's like, and there might be she, some babies. Hey, look, like, around, like, you know, she's looking around at the other options. Like, ah, let's go love. <laughs> let's go love. There we go. Uh, before I let you go, what do you got coming up? You know, I got um, you know, I got my my Fubo. You know, no chill. Yep. Me and you know, me and jo Josiah, we just you know resigned. You know, two year deal. Congrats. Uh, thank you, thank you. Congrats. You know, um, so follow that show, and then um, my personal uh, YouTube channel, No Chill Gill. Right. You know, I'm starting up. Um, you got a membership section on there, I see. Yeah, I got a membership. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you did you did you subscribe? Not yet, but people have been telling me about it. people have been telling me about it, so I'm gonna subscribe right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm just, you know, um I did a I did a hundred and eleven member giveaway. Okay. So giving away jerseys, money, gift cards, TVs. TVs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so you know, it's just, you know, I'm gonna read a black beast, you know. Oh, yeah. Black Mr. Beast? Yeah, Mr. Beast, I love him. <laughs> He's a billionaire, you know. At 24. Yeah, I mean, he's amazing. His company is worth $1.5 billion. He actually turned down a billion dollar offer to sell all his companies. He should. You know, like we all look up to the the Jay-Zs and the Puffies and everything, but this guy is literally less than half their age he's a, and has become the richest YouTuber ever in the world. Doing stuff that doesn't hurt anyone's feelings. Doesn't like, hurt. It's, not, it's all positive. It's, it's all positive. It's all giving fun. away free shit. And like I said, it's all positive. It's all fun. It's interactive. I mean, it's just brilliant. It's it, brilliant. it is absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. That's who I look up to. Yeah, me too. I look up to that guy. Like, like I, I watch him and I'm like, yo, this is, like, I, like, it's just amazing. The thing that looks like it's like a, it's a fucking kid thinking of kid shit. It's like, it's, he turns everything like, it's like, it's like, He's he's a one man Nickelodeon. Yo, he, <laughs> I saw an interview with him, and they said, "What is the craziest thing anyone's ever paid you for?" And he said that some billionaire, or whatever, hit him up and was like, "Hey, can you do a shout out for my son?" And he was like, "No, nah, I'm I'm too busy. I'll, I'll pay you whatever you want." And he was like, hundred thousand." The guy wired a hundred thousand into his account. He picked up his phone, gave a shout out to his son. And that was the end of that transaction. A hundred thousand dollars for a shout out. Now that 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 right there fast forward that goes rewinds all the way back to the Kanye's gonna get a new shoe. You never know. <laughs> <laughs>
You never know. <laughs> There's somebody out there who has so much money, they don't give a fuck. They, they don't just... give a fuck. There you go. <laughs> say, say a picture with my shoe and I'll fund your project. You, like, this parent, parents will do anything for their kids. There's some yeah. parents, yeah, you know what I mean? Yep. That's how it is. Gilbert Arenas, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Until next time. Right. Peace.